Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's planning board uh, hearings. Uh, before we get started, uh, we'll start every meeting with uh, public comments. So if you, if anybody's here that has uh, any comments or questions about anything that uh, does not reflect any of the hearings that were about to uh, be presented in front of us, just raise your hand. You can come to the podium, and we can hear you speak. Yes, sir. We just hear uh, your name yes. and uh, yeah. address. Me. Yeah, my name is Steve Callahan. I live at 824 Birch Pit Road in Northampton. And what I'm here to ask the committee to look at and reconsider is the vote that you took on the 28th of July. Uh, this, sir, this, this is, is a continuing. This is the continuing process that began two or three years ago. Understood. Sir. Every this meeting is... was not identified, sir. I, I just said, if you have something that has nothing to do with the hearings that we're about to talk about, feel free, but this does. And so we can hear your, take your comments later, but we can't listen okay, to Okay, so we, we can discuss this later. We're not gonna say, Absolutely. oh, we're gonna be limited only <coughs> to the-, uh, the We're happy to hear your here. comments. This right now, this part of the meeting is for other as comments. Long, as long as we're gonna be able to speak. You're good. Okay, yep. and is that gonna be just prior to it's heard? No. I'm sorry? When will that be, just prior to the- Eight o'clock on the shirt? No, when it starts at eight o'clock, there'll be a uh, period okay. for public comment. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, just for those who are unfamiliar with the process, when we open up the hearing, uh, there'll be a presentation. Typically, there's a presentation, there's some back and forth uh, from the board, then we'll open it up to uh, public discussion. And at that time, anybody who has comments can come to the podium and we'll hear, we'll you know, gladly hear your comments. Then it'll return back to the board. We'll have further discussion. And if we have enough information, make a motion. If not, we can continue or we did have different options. So uh, with that being said, any other comments that aren't relative to the, the hearings that we have in front of us tonight? Uh, so uh, with seeing that, we will start with our, our first hearing was uh, for a major site plan for 10 Holly Street, but we're going to continue that. Yeah, so you, the, this project was continued from the last meeting um, because the applicant did not have a stormwater permit from um, DPW at that point. Um, there were some uh, technical issues on, from the, on the consultant side and they were not able to get uh, information um, to DPW. So they've asked to continue to the November 14th meeting at 7 o'clock to give them, you know, another couple of weeks to get that stormwater um, design ironed out. So we need a motion to continue? Right, to November 14th and, and to a specific time. And I, I would recommend 7, 7 p.m. Seven o'clock, okay. Uh, move that we move the, move the, uh, the Holly Street uh, project <coughs> to November 14th at 7 p.m. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, those who approve approval? All of them. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's it. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to continue that and then jump into our next. Uh, item of business, which is for seven o'clock proposed zoning map amendment to rezone parcels on East Hampton Road and Texas Road uh, from GI to OI and rezone two parcels from GI to FFR. And Carolyn has those up on the screen. Yeah. So, um, what you have um, in your packets and what is on the screen is a proposal to change to rezone, which is, is a map change. Changing the zoning district from general industrial zone to office industrial, um, all along East Hampton Road and Texas Road. So a couple of years ago, there was a, a, a map change that you all recommended to City Council. City Council adopted it to rezone a couple of parcels on the southern end of East Hampton Road from general industrial to office industrial. And then uh, you may remember there was an application for um, the um, climate controlled self storage project that's allowed in office industrial. So um, it, that um, self storage is allowed in office industrial, so that you approve the project on the heels of that map change. Uh, throughout the city, we've been um, looking at rezoning the um, area outside of the industrial park to office industrial allows a little more flexibility particularly in the redevelopment of the older mill buildings 
Um, you all have had conversations about keeping the general industrial district for the industrial park uh, because it doesn't allow residential and also allows higher volume uh, warehousing, which is appropriate in that location because it's right by the interstate um, exit. Um, and you wouldn't likely see those kinds of uses um, in town or in this location or in Leeds. A few, actually maybe a month ago, you reviewed a zoning map change in Leeds to um, change general industrial to office industrial for the remaining parcels in Leeds. So this is sort of following on the heels of that. It happens to be um, many more parcels because this, this is just sort of ring or straddles um, East Hampton Road for the most part. There are two parcels in this stretch that are um, conservation parcels that um, we've been um, simultaneously um, or, or subsequent to acquiring open space for conservation purposes, we've been rezoning those um, map, um, those lots out of whatever their underlying zoning is to a um, farms, forest, and rivers zone, which just really is um, more indicative about what's allowed and not allowed. We don't want to have a general industrial zone on a conservation parcel because it's never going to be developed. So um, that's included in this rezoning as well. And those are, um, that's the parcel that um, was just a leftover piece that we've more recently acquired just in the last couple of months. So because it's in this vicinity, we're um, proposing, staff proposed that we go ahead and map those to farms, forest, and rivers. So um, that's it in a nutshell. Basically, it shows that linkage there along East Hampton Road, and then up on the northern part is the Texas Road piece. But this goes all the way down to the East Hampton border. The, um, the Texas Road, which is just a funky road to begin with. Yeah. Um, so what was driving that? Was it um, to bring it in line with the zoning for the, the lots around it, or was it to just specifically targeted to allow that? Um, so the Texas Road par parcels are all general industrial as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we just thought it made sense um, that even though it's, um, it's not entirely contiguous with the East Hampton Road piece, it's sort of the last bit on this portion of the city that's still zone general industrial. So it's really just to go ahead and make that change. <clears throat> uh, is this, um, do we need the uh, public participation on this? Or? Yeah, so, you, so <clears throat> the charge for the planning board, the planning board and city council have to hold um, public hearings for any zoning amendments, and this is a zoning amendment, this is a change to the map. So the planning board holds a public hearing, takes comment, makes a recommendation to city council. City council holds a separate public hearing, and I believe that's scheduled for November 12th. Um, and um, then once the city council closes its public hearing, they make a recommendation to the full city council as well, and then it goes to full city council. Any questions by the board? Would you remind us what the difference is between the two, or did you sure. size spacing up when you earlier <laughs> said just that? Um, I did. The only one I mentioned was that the, the warehousing, sort of heavy warehousing uses, are allowed in general industrial, but not in office industrial. On the flip side, in office industrial, there are uses that are not allowed in GI. Um, such as self-storage units. Um, we also allow residential use above the first floor in office industrial, so you can have live workspace or just simply residential units above a first floor commercial um, um, uh, space. Um, in OI. In OI, but not in general industrial. So in OI, we can do uh, commercial with a residential above, yes. but not in GI. Which right. is what these are in now. Right. Okay. The other um, element that um, provides more flexibility in office industrial, which um, probably is not so um, 
relevant in this scenario is um, there's more flexibility for the reuse of older um, mill buildings for um, restaurant and entertainment uses as a means to, so the buildings have to be older than 1939, I think is what the zoning says, so um, that there aren't any of those in this area, um, but that's another difference between <coughs> office and restaurant and general industrial. And otherwise, the uses are the same. So they're very similar districts, except for those specific. So OI uh, gives you a little more flexibility, it seems like. Than right. Can you, do, can you do what this, like the sort of fake uh, commercial space at the bottom, like the first, the first little bit, is, <laughs> and then the, everything else could be residential? I wouldn't refer to it as fake. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, temper, the temper commercial space. No, in this case, it really does have to be the first floor. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's not about creating activity on the street. Okay. More than just, um, uh, we want to preserve as much um, back office and kind of workspace and uh, opportunities that we can so the whole point is really we want it to be mostly industrial uses but if if there are compatibilities between residential and that particular use on the first floor then why not let someone live above their you know workshop or something so do you, and do you stop to, if something has to be built do they have to push uh, sidewalks um, so um, this is not about the development standards, it's just about the uses okay. allowed. So the same um, rules would apply for any new development okay. across the board, no matter what district it's in. George, so um, Carolyn, you mentioned that a lot of this is about renovating old mill buildings. But for instance, on Texas Road, there's a lot of undeveloped land. Mm -hmm. So if somebody come in and build a, put a new building there, mm -hmm. that was for entertainment or restaurant. Um, um, restaurant uses are allowed by special permit in the office industrial district, but it can only be a percentage of a building. It can't uh -huh. just be a straight. But things like if you had a, a, brew, a brewery or a distillery, you could have a small <coughs> restaurant space or tasting room or something like that that would be allowed there. The interesting thing about Texas Road is that there are um, long-standing um, national grid utility easements that really restrict what you can build there. So a lot of it is not buildable anyway because of those easements. Okay. And it's certainly along the river too. So yeah, right. There's a lot. Of so that. really, only the portions of those. <coughs> where there are already existing buildings and maybe a little bit more um, could be reused or rebuilt. Uh, any other comments or questions by the board? So we can open this up to the public. Does anyone uh, in the public have any comments regarding this issue? No? Okay. Uh, we believe. Can we close public hearing? Second discussion. All in favor? Um, so we need a recommendation to uh, approve this. So choose and move it forward to City Council to move that we. Uh, I move that we modify the parcels listed uh, with 7 p.m. agenda meeting. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, so city zoning map amendment 353.4 um, that we raise up as recommended. So there's that one and then there's the next if you have your uh, agenda. Right. And then I'd also move that we modify the city zoning map to rezone a portion of map 3749 and 4439 from general industrial to form farms forest group. Second. Motion second by Alan. Any discussion? Favor? I'll say something. I would. <laughs> okay. Instead, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's moving on. Um, our next hearing is at officially 7 30. Oh, no, you're right. So, well, this is 7 30, but the agenda says. 7-10, look at that, Carolyn, right on top of things. 
Um, okay, so we are going to move to our 710 uh, special permit hearing, uh, uh, special permit and site plan, uh, site plan by True Leave LLC Medical Marijuana Dispensary 216 North King Street, Northampton Map ID 18-7. And we've got a presentation. Uh, Mr. Chair, Jesse Alderman, attorney for the applicant Life SS Inc., which does business as True Leave. With me is John Furman, project engineer and the architect of record, Dennis Greenwood, and True Leave uh, Cannabis Corp's uh, director of business development, Camilo Basta, was also here. And I did want to just clarify one thing. You said, I believe we're here just on the site plan approval application and no special permit is required for this proposal. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was giving okay. inaccurate information. <laughs> Just so I dropped a little bit, but you're good. Yeah, yeah. So we'll repeat that again. You so it was advertised for something more than they need, which is better than less than what they need. Right. <laughs> right. They only need a site plan for medical problem. marijuana, right? Okay, sorry about that. No. <laughs> Good evening. I'm John Furman. I'm the director of land development for uh, DHD and an uh, engineer of record for the project. Uh, I also think, in addition to site plan approval, we are asking for a waiver of a traffic study. Um, for that, and we can. Uh, as part in, of your site plan. As part of our site plan. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a special uh, request or not. But uh, so uh, uh, Life Essence is looking to uh, become a tenant in the existing building at 216 North King Street. I have on the screen here right now the uh, uh, existing condition survey. And if you look at this line, it kind of goes around through here, and it comes up the front on the side. <clears throat> All of this is the tenant space they're proposing. <clears throat> it's approximately 3,800 square feet. Um, the building has uh, another tenant in it right now, which is the uh, Valley Motorsports. And then there's a portion of the front building which is currently un unoccupied as well. Uh, there are three curb cuts on the site, one on Hatfield Street, uh, two on North King Street. Um, and uh, we are proposing uh, a few improvements uh, to the site. Uh, this is a site plan that was submitted with the set. Uh, prior to this meeting, we attended the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting and we received three findings uh, for the project. The so first is to allow for multiple curb cuts that are already existing on the site. Uh, there are three there. We're not proposing to change any, um, and we don't have the ability to change anything. So three curb cuts that are there, we got that finding. The second one pertains to uh, parking, um, and I'll zoom up and show you that one. Uh, on the side of the building, where our front entrance will be, oops, uh, there are these uh, uh, existing spaces on the side here. Uh, your or ordinance requires spacings, uh, uh, parking space to be eight and a half by 18 with a drive aisle of 18 feet. We have eight and a half by 18, but the drive aisle is only 13 at the moment. Um, because it doesn't conform, we requested a finding. It's existing, we're not looking to change that. What we are doing is pulling out the fence that uh, separates the two properties and we're putting a single beam guardrail on either side of it. So we're gaining a foot on that drive aisle, but uh, that's finding the issue. So and we're not changing the parking, so that's staying the way it is. Before you go too much further, would you just give us a scope of what the business will entail? So sure. I, it's a, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just, uh, so I can. No, of course, fair enough. Uh, thank you. The, the business is proposed to be a medical uh, marijuana dispensary and only a medical marijuana dispensary. So it will be available uh, only for access, secured access only to those who have um, uh, patient registrations with the department's medical marijuana program. So think maybe net up before the adult use and before recreational customers, as some call them, were allowed in. So that is the scope of this. Um, tested, licensed cannabis products will be available for uh, purchase only again with those with a patient registration card. And we can make that a condition? Absolutely. Of Absolutely. Because that really what? impacts the traffic. Well, it's right? a condition of your site, of your site. Well, plan. so um, you, um, you can't, um, so the zoning um, needs to be addressed now that we have adult use. Um, and now that the CCC has merged with DPH or DPH got absorbed by CCC approval process, Cannabis Control Commission approval process. 
originally the first uses um, allowed um, for uh, marijuana were medical use only. And so the zoning was drafted to um, address um, traffic impacts of medical use through um, triggering site plan review. Um, when adult use became or was approved, the zoning was amended just for adult use, um, and uh, knowing that they're still they were still permitted separately at the state level. So that's why we have two different standards for. And so now that at the state level, those have been merged together under one licensing process. There's no agreements for um, no matter what um, process you're going through. We need the city needs to go back and um, and merge those two so that we're not distinguishing between one or the other. And the difference was really to try to address traffic. So actually, the site plan is what's addressing traffic. We have um, we don't trigger site we don't require site plan review by adult use. So it's allowed by right because we're <coughs> addressing it through host agreement. Um, uh, the traffic issues through that mechanism. So I would say you can't condition that it's going to be medical use because the others are allowed by right. But we could condition this site plan approval. I'm not sure that would, I'm not, that may be a distinction without a difference because we would we would be allowed to convert to adult use by right, but we would also right. need those community really from the mayor's office. So right. I mean, I, I right. I'm not sure that it really uh, makes much of a difference. I just wanted to clarify that it would be allowed by right, so you wouldn't see it again. Because of any use that you, any conversion of a use that's allowed by right would never come back to the planning board. But the, but the city's involvement would certainly not. This I understand this body's involvement right. may stop through the site plan approval process or the special permit process. But right. the city's involvement, were that day to come, which it may or may it's not. It's very. It's different. Right. It's, right. right. But right. it's outside of right. what the planning board. So it's not a condition that we should consider. But no, no, no. I think we assume that everybody agree with that engineering. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, keep going. All right. Back to engineering. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, that, uh, I just talked about the uh, the second finding we had, which was the uh, parking aisle, drive aisle. Uh, the third one is actually uh, related to landscaping. So your zoning ordinance requires, a, uh, I believe it's a, a 20 foot buffer uh, of landscaping along a frontage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we currently have seven. Matthew T has a project uh, going at the intersection of Hatfield Street and uh, North King Street where they're putting in a roundabout. The curb lines that you see here, these shaded back ones are the existing. The, uh, the darker ones are the proposed. So we superimpose that design on this plan. And we're going to be ending up uh, with a buffer of four feet. So uh, that is something that's beyond our control. We, we can't fix it. Uh, to offset uh, that um, uh, landscape requirement, uh, and I can get to that in a, in a later plan and talk about it more in depth, is they're actually proposing to add landscape to this property um, where there really none exists right now. And I can go through that and show that to you as we, as we move on. Um, additionally, uh, right now there's a cross curb cut between <coughs> these two properties, and we are proposing to close that. Uh, and the, our, our issue is uh, with that is that it would help, I think, improve safety for people coming in. When you come into these parking spaces, you have to back out, um, and that eliminates any conflict that might happen with those that, with that curb cut. And that will also be additional landscaping uh, that we're adding. Um, as we go through the, the plan set, uh, these are, are just some of our standard details. Uh, one thing I do want to note, uh, here uh, was incorrect on our drawing is that there is a, a significant tree in the back of the property here and um, our site designer got a little aggressive with the drawing uh, that that tree uh, we, we have a, a dumpster that's being added to the back of the property but that dumpster is a roll dumpster very small and have an enclosure on it when you get picked up it'll actually be rolled out through the gate rolled into the front and picked up over here uh, he showed a new paving line which would uh, kind of assume that that tree was coming out. That's a significant tree, and that is not being touched, that is remaining. That is noted on our landscaping plan as well. That tree is staying. 
it's really the only tree on the property, so we're not going to cut it down. So I'm sorry. How, how are you? How are we doing? How are we doing? Getting the dumpster. Well, this dumpster is uh, drawn way oversized. Okay. So don't think that that dumpster okay. is going through that. Open. <laughs> so I said my drafter got a little aggressive with uh, okay. with the design. So uh, the, you, I'm sure you're familiar with the roll-off dumpsters. Yes. They're you know they're big enough for a person to move. So. Uh, so let me uh, zoom this down a little bit here. And are they going to be able to move it when this snows? It'll have to be clean. Yeah, there, there will be a pad that's put there, so it'll be sitting on a pad with an enclosure, and they'll they'll be able to. It won't be rolling on grass or anything. But will the pad affect the tree? Um, I, I we're pretty far away, and the pad's not going to be big. Again, that's drawn way oversized. The pad will be something like three by four. It's not that large. Okay. Uh, these are our dumpsters. Again, don't pay attention to that one. Uh, this is the landscaping plan, which I had uh, mentioned. And uh, the circles on here, uh, or the ellipses, technically, are, were the uh, uh, issues of the findings uh, that we uh, just meeting we just came from. Uh, the red ones are the curb cuts. The green ones are the landscaping, and the blue one here is the um, is the parking. So what we are looking at uh, doing uh, is landscaping ar around the front, and we're adding uh, trees within that buffer through here. Uh, those trees are uh, horn beams. Not sure what that is. Sounds nice. The um, and then uh, uh, the CAs on the side here are basically pepper bushes, and they're uh, three to four feet tall. So that will provide some some landscaping. Where are those bushes? Those, those are right on the side. Here. Okay. In the, in the plant. Do you know uh, if the trees, um, other than sounding nice, do you know if those were are those a shade tree that's on the list? In the city. Um, I believe they are. I'll double check later. Yeah, if it's, yeah. they chose that from the list or if they just came up with a tree. Uh, the designer, uh, Greylock Design Associates, has done numerous, numerous projects uh, in the city, so they're familiar with the list. So, so pull them out. Uh, one thing to note because this is a, a minor project, we do not have a stormwater permit uh, to obtain for this. However, going back to the site plan, there are four catch basins on the site. Uh, and we're having a, a note, we had a note on the plan that they're basically to be vacuum clean. So uh, they, I'm, I'm not sure when the last time was, but we'll, we'll clean out the sump area so we get some benefit out of that. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, is there an open space calculation about what's existing and what will be after the plan? Uh, I don't know that we uh, did that because uh, we are adding yeah. so much, we're adding more than, than what's there. It's right now. It's all concrete. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. So, because yeah, so we did not calculate. Don't, don't they need to do something to meet the open space requirement? We don't have an open. We the only open space required in the HB district is for those buffers and those tree areas. So we don't have a, a percentage. So they're adding to get closer uh, to compliance with those requirements. Um, but that's the requirement for open space in the HB district. Uh, the last plan that I will be speaking about, uh, then I will ask uh, our architect to come up and walk through the plans, is basically the lighting plan we put together. Uh, in this area here, which is really the area where our main entrance is, uh, there will be some uh, light fixtures added onto the side of the building. Uh, there are uh, light fixtures on the building uh, itself. So. Uh, we took a light meter and we walked around the building. So these numbers, I don't know if I can zoom up enough to see them. These are the foot candles um, of the existing uh, building at night. And um, you can see the, the you know, um, 1.8 cubic feet, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Uh, this one happened to fall right underneath the light. So I think that's 3.3. Uh, so they're fairly high. Um, to kind of help orient uh, you where these are is that the, the have these symbols here and they're key to these pictures so this uh, picture it, at night it, it's kind of tough with the cameras nowadays it automatically wants to give you light you can't take a dark picture anymore so uh, take these for 
uh, representative, um, but you can see the front of the building is, it has uh, existing um, uh, signs on it and there's a street light right in front. That's taken here, looking at the front of the building. This next one here is taken in the corner of the parking lot, looking down this aisle. Um, there are lights on the, the building, which you can see. The majority of this light is spillover from um, uh, the, the car dealership uh, adjacent to us. On this side, we, uh, we stood here and took a picture onto the adjacent property. And you can see there's, a, there's an existing pole here that has a light on it aimed right at the property. So it's shooting across our driveway and you can see the shadow uh, into there. And the last one, which is basically standing here looking down this aisle. Um, this is when I figured out that uh, my flash decided to turn on, so it's really not that bright that's there. But you can see the existing light that's at the back of the of that drive out. How are the lights um, scheduled? Are there, is it photo cell on, timer off, or do you know? Um, I don't know. So, so we're scheduled right now. We have wall packs that are dark sky compliant. They're going to be on. Okay. And you know. Typically, what we've done in the past is we have uh, uh, exterior lighting to go off an hour after close of business, something like that. Can you go back to the, I know you're talking about lighting, but. Uh, yes. So the, um, can you go back to that one? So the main entrance is on the right where those circles are? Can you show me where the main entrance is? Uh, there's two. It's either this one or this one. No, you, no, can, no. you can access the actual building. Oh, for the building. Our, our, yes, right over here. So is that parking along that side? It, is that going to be reserved for like employees or is that going to be customer? That's owned? patient park. That's I mean, it just seems odd to me because you, you, they have people have to back out. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's 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 not enough of an aisle to turn around. So there there's an existing use in this building was a healthcare business of some kind it didn't see patients but it had counselor training and others and we think that there's probably and there was a lot of people coming and going i think it was called service net right john so this is this is the existing condition that's been there for a while so there's those patient parking on the side aisle as well as six spaces in the front of the building that are reserved under our lease um for us so um it's it's a tight lot for sure but it's not a perfect scenario, but we've tested it out and believe it will work just fine. I mean, I've helped an unassisted permit dispensaries for this exact same use in the greater Boston area where we deal with a lot of tight lots that have um, less favorable configurations even than this. And it should it should work just fine. It's not gonna be perfect, but. Do people drive around the back? They can't because yeah. of the tree. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm less concerned about the tightness of it, but the fact that it's the only way to get out is to back yeah. out. Um, it, and that that configuration has been there since this building has been in existence. And there's been, I think, uh, two uses in there that, that we know of that uh, did just that. Counselors would pull in, go and get their assignments, get training, whatever they had to do, and then they would back out. I personally talked to the, uh, the uh, business that was there from ServiceNet and asked them about that. And they, they never had an issue there. So the, from the projected patient po population, it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be a concern. If you had, if you had a, a co-located adult use in medical there, we would obviously have to have this, you know, substantial discussions with the city about how that, that, that would work. But at, I, the intensity of this use is truly, uh, we believe, and we've looked into this very deeply, not going to be an issue. So is there some sort of side, I mean, presumably these are medical or patients with problems. Um, is there a safe way for them to walk in and deal with the cars at the same time? Uh, they will, yeah, the, um, let me uh, go back to the, to the Like a sidewalk or a striping something? There's yeah, something yeah. to the person who is, has arthritis, they're going to get treated with medical marijuana, doesn't get hit by a car. Right. There is a, a planter area, and then there's three spots here. The door is right in front of this. I, I mean, I, I've actually I've actually worked in that building, um, and I mean, it wasn't a problem for when people were sort of driving and leaving, but I, I do wonder if there's sharing, sharing a pathway, uh, sharing a pathway, um, 
Yeah, it seems tight, and I and I and I and I trust, and I, and I get that in Boston they allow these things, but in Northampton we have more space. Um, and now it's just uh, so I, a, Oh, I'm sorry. And so I just I'm just trying to figure out. I mean, it, there's no way that you can put a door up front. If so the the ADA spot is there right next to the door. So if anybody has a mobility restriction, they're going to be. In literally at the front door. Um, I believe we could make some sort of a mobility restricted designation for those three parallel spots there, which wouldn't present a conflict with um, the cars up on the opposite side of the door. Likewise, I would just I would just note for for the members of the board that, that we did have the, you know that a pretty robust discussion about this at the ZBA and we did receive the finding. So I you know I again I think I think we're the for the limited patient population that we're projecting to serve, we really don't don't foresee trouble. But I, I would certainly be amenable to um, wayfinding signs and even a reservation of spots for additional mobility restricted uh, patients to those three parallel spots. If those three parallel spots were replaced with a sidewalk, what would that do to? We wouldn't have the parking zone. We wouldn't. What I'm sorry. We would not have the number of spaces under our lease that the zoning requires for the use. And with your lease with the spots in the front. I don't think we have a parking room. Yeah, yeah, we could, we could wave You could also yeah. wave it. Yeah. yeah. With your lease, as far as the parking spots in the front, how, 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 you get all of those, half of those? We get six, six. right, Camilla, yeah. in front? 22 or 24 total, and I think it's six in the front. Six in the front. I was there this afternoon and there were no cars at all parked in the front. Because I mean, it's, it was empty. It's empty, right? Because it's, 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 it's like a motor cross. Like yeah, it's only motor source. Right. Motor but it, it does run contrary to what we typically don't want to promote pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic in the same Especially lane. Especially backing up in reverse. Right. You know, these. The spaces up top. How many spaces are beyond the door in that handicapped spot? Three. I mean, if we got a waiver from the parking for those three parallel spots, and you know, I can, you know, I can, I can represent to you right now that we'd be happy to explore trying to lease three additional spots from the landlord. It is a, it is a, a site with ample parking, but right now we, that's not the business agreement, and I can't over promise there but if we were to get a waiver of the parking minimum we'd be happy to do a side aisle where the three parallel spots are yeah i think that's just i mean for what for, for your, your you're proposing a business that involves you know people who are getting treated for medical purposes and though i i don't think we should impose hospital restrictions on these types of buildings I think having sort of safe walking places for people is a responsible thing. Yeah. I think we very much favor the the, the intent, and, and I don't. And I, I we would that would work better okay. for meeting Great. patient needs. I just we were hamstrung by the parking minimum. Yep. So we need a waiver. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think you need a waiver because there is no minimum parking requirements. We thought there was one for two inches square. Maybe we read it wrong, but. <laughs> so there, there's probably a conflict. Uh, there's, so there's the table of use that dictates that sort of overrides what's in the, and the table for a highway business, central business, all the districts that have um, standards for, um, and most of, many of the commercial districts have zero, unless it's a specific use. So there, um, and we don't spell out uh, medical marijuana in particular in section eight of the zoning. So, and on top of that, even as sort of belt and suspenders, the board has the ability to waive or reduce parking by 20%. So um, yeah, I think you're fine. Well, we share the sense of the board that that would be a great solution and it would help us meet our patients' needs. Uh, we just maybe misread our, maybe we need to sharpen our pencils and figure out what. <laughs> question um, uh, regarding the program how, how many staff are would typically be at the building could they use those parking spots to the plan north of the entrance 
No, how many employees will be on site at, the, at one time? Four, four or so? 3,800 square feet. Yeah, four to six. Four to six, including oh, security six personnel. Days. Yes, they can use the ones to the front, absolutely. Yeah, so I'm wondering, no, not the front, I'm saying the, to the, the plan north. <coughs> oh, we should we should guarantee, we should, it, it, we should um, require employees to use the furthest back. Yeah, right. I think that makes a lot of right. sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. I'd rather have employees back and go. Yeah, because yeah. they're not coming and going. Right. I think that makes and tremendous sense. going to be at five, six, seven, eight right. hours. So. Right. so you'd have one handicap and then employee parking, yep. sidewalk, and then, and then patients. And patients. Mm -hmm. I think that makes tremendous sense. Yeah. So did you get rid of these three tenant parallel parks? That's what it is. Yeah. 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 And, and put some sort of hash. Inside the Sorry. I don't think we should yeah. impose putting an actual sidewalk in. I, mean, I would. Okay. Just because of the backing up yeah. nature. Okay. Okay. Sorry, John. Got sidetracked. Keep going. That's all right. Uh, I'm pretty much done with the site. Uh, turn it over to the uh, architect. Before you leave the site, speaking of sidewalk, is there, is there currently a sidewalk along? King Street there? No. 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 But so they're going to put one in. They're going to put one in. Right. Okay. It's part of the Hatfield yeah. Street. Right. They being Mass DOT. Right. Not they being Mass DOT. Not being Mass DOT. Not being Mass DOT. You've got the trees. You've got the trees. Okay. Three. Do we need to know about the architectural features of either the inside or the outside? The building's not changing on the outside. Right. And inside. No. Yeah, okay. That's all dictated by this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this can be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're done. We're done. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I know. Item right there. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments from the board? <clears throat> Just a, a broad-reaching uh, question, Karen. So. This is a tenant, so they've got a lease agreement with the owner of the building. But in some <clears throat> parts, we talked about the parking. Well, that's the way it's always been. Our hands are tied. It's not our building. We're just a tenant. If this was uh, the owner of the building and they were and, and they were proposing these modifications or change, would we act any differently than we're doing now? I just don't want to set a precedent yeah. where. No, I, I think it is a different situation because the, the applicant doesn't have control of the site or the entire building, um, yet they still need to come through this process because of the use, that, the way the zoning is set up now. Um, having said that, that's why they went to the zoning board to seek relief from meeting a lot of those standards that you would uh, might normally see. I guess I should also step back and say that um, there's no footprint change. so. You wouldn't see if this was just a reuse of that space um, for a use that didn't, in and of itself, trigger site plan. You wouldn't see any changes anyway. So, uh, except <coughs> along the street front, except that buffer, they're required to, to address that or go to the zoning board for relief. So, um, in most circumstances, you wouldn't um, necessarily be looking at this anyway. Okay. Um, but it's just the nature of this particular thing. Um, so this <clears throat> intersection that's been flagged for a long time is kind of a dangerous place. That's why the roundabout is coming in. There's a hope that more people will be able to walk up to River Valley Market and beyond. So I wonder if it's appropriate on that sidewalk there to request that maybe a bench be put there, as we've done in other parts of King Street, if that would be kind of a resting place for pedestrians. Or does that break up? So. Um, it's a much narrower buffer than we have in the other part. So the reason that the buffer standard is you have 10 foot of um, tree belt, then a six foot sidewalk, then a 12 foot tree belt. Uh -huh. So that gives a lot more space for that kind of thing. Um, and, and they went to the zoning board for relief from providing those, um, all, all of that. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure it's the, um, who would be the best location for that? Because the, the um, depth or the dimension is, is yeah. so small. Yeah. And also the way the roundabout's coming in, it's hard to visualize it that would be appropriate. 
anyway yet? I mean, like, I know, I mean, I don't know. In this part, it would be yeah. after, I mean, this is the approach to the roundabout, so you're sort of out of that, but um, I think it's more about the dimensions of the site. Is any place along King Street is appropriate for people to oh, walk sure, and sit right. down. Yeah. Um, and we put that river valley so we put that kind of sidewalk to nowhere right in the hope that projects somewhere <laughs> down the line would we can start to, to connect the dots right <laughs> exactly uh quick question so there's one side building uh top left yes <clears throat> there, i thought there was another side building or garage is anything being removed or nothing's changed? nothing's being removed everything's the same this this building is is here um and that's the only side building or uh, yeah, this is the existing conditions. Right? This is the existing condition survey. That building, and then this building right here. Yeah, I thought there was another. There's another building on the back side of this, which is on the car dealership, but it's on the property. It's like right here. Okay. Maybe that's what you're. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a <laughs> bunch of what boxes there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions by the board before we open it up to public? Are you? You guys all set? All set. Okay. Um, all right, John, we're, we're good for the time being. Uh, any questions by the public? No? Okay. Uh, all right, we'll leave this open for a little bit while we discuss any other discussion or questions by the board. I, I don't have uh, an issue with this, and I think that um, <coughs> The items that we brought forward are good ones. I think the uh, the lighting plan. So far, I've got the lighting plan, the sidewalk on the side. Um, we talked or tangentially about the uh, payment in lieu of the traffic study, uh, which the applicant has already uh, addressed. Um, parking, employee parking, in the back. employee parking in the back. And how do we want to with signage, or are we, or is that just a promise from the applicant? Or? <laughs> I think signage would be helpful. So in case there are six spaces and there's only four employees parked there at that time, the public doesn't come in and park there. Yeah. And we have that wrapped in and out. So if there were signage installed on the building, it's an employee parking lot, which is going to cause a consternation for folks because why do these darn employees get to park so close? Well, it seems like the signage is going to have to be. In the front, like, well, in the before front, that, right, right. So like, once you get down there, there's a right. parking line. You might <laughs> also consider not necessarily doing six because there, there, there's a range of number of employees, and that way it would leave some of those spaces open. Maybe just the furthest four, as opposed to six, um, as as designated. I think I think four would be appropriate number. I think there would be. Few and far between times when the full when there would be six employees on site. Um, we do want to make sure that at times of peak demand that there are available spaces for patients. So the last four spots. Can you say again how many spots there are after the handicap spots? There's seven. Seven. Yeah, the, that whole site has eight. Anything else? Any comments in general? Um, yes, yeah, so what was the rationale for not having a traffic impact study? So the zoning allows for, if they're, if the applicant is making a, a voluntarily making a payment in lieu of traffic mitigation, instead of spending additional money on um, traffic analysis, they're offering to mitigate what we are assuming their trips are, then that's, um, allow the other thing the other piece of it is there's been a lot of traffic study work done on uh -huh. king street as part of this uh, as part of the you know the roundabout and so um we told all applicants if they're if they address what the assumptions are for their traffic impact then they don't need to provide um a study because of good current data. That, that's what um, right, we have assumptions about what their impacts will be. They're offered to address their impacts in the way that we um, assign these. It's often interesting because so money goes into traffic mitigation, but it's not that money isn't spent on mitigating traffic in that neighborhood. Really. 
doesn't well, have to be. That's, uh, there is, we do allocate resources to um, uh, pedestrian and other safety improvements in the network that's in this um, vicinity of where that project, where that impact is. So we do do that. But it's not necessarily going to be right at that intersection. I mean, we're, we, you know, there's a lot of money being put yep. into the roundabout to make that safer, but there are other streets that are feeding into that where people will be coming from other places. It's not just, they don't just appear there on North Peak Street. So there are many places where we can look um, to address um, issues. Anything else? All right, so public comment is still open. The motion to close. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Um, so I've got, I think, four things. Uh, the lighting uh, off one hour after close of business, sidewalk on the side, um, payment in lieu of uh, traffic study, and employee parking, the last four um, parking spots with adequate signage there, too. Um, I just add another one. You were correct about the horn beam. It's not officially on our list, so um, you might um, uh, the need to change the plans to show the parking so that um, modify the street tree um, planting to um, include trees that are on our approved list. So the tree sounded too good. That's what I thought. It did. Struck me wrong. So, um, okay. Can we get a new landscape? Yeah. <laughs> Can I make one additional request? If I... No, Comments. sorry. <laughs> We're uh, closed public comment, so uh, now this discussion is just among us at this point. Though I can. No, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Could you go through our uh, conditions one more time? Uh, lighting plan uh, lights off one hour after close of business, uh, sidewalk on the side, tra uh, payment in lieu of uh, traffic study. Employee parking the last four spots with adequate signage, and the trees need to be on the city's um, uh, shade tree list. And I just want to confirm so when our, our sidewalk standards are cement, concrete, five feet, unless um, it's you know, this is not on the street, so normally we would do um, six feet in a commercial district, but since this is yeah, a this street, is a street side, that's true, right? Right, so do we need, do we, need we don't need to do a waiver or anything. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I need a motion. Uh, I'll move that it be, um, let's see. Far away. <coughs> and this is site plan only, not a special permit. Um, yeah, for um, map ID 18 7. Site plan for Truly LLC be approved with the five conditions just recycled. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Opposed? There you go. Thank you. Your approval. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, we're going to keep moving. We're a little behind, uh, so we're going to keep things going and open up the next hearing scheduled for 7.30 p.m. by Thomas Gu, site plan for five new residential units, 25 Maple Ave, Northampton Map ID, 32C-71 and 72.
and got a presentation. My name is Terry Reynolds, Steve Reynolds Engineering. I'm here for Tom Gu. Okay. And Dan. Um, and uh, what's being proposed is um, basically a five unit townhouse development at the end of Maple Avenue uh, downtown. And uh, basically, what's currently there is it's, it's an open open site with a, with a parking lot. Uh, it is zoned uh, Special Conservancy on so about two thirds of the site. And then it's uh, residential on, on the front, front corner in, in this area. Uh, so this is a site plan approval. Uh, and so what's being proposed are five units of three story townhouses uh, with 10 space parking area, um, plantings, um, and uh, some restoration uh, to improve the conditions that are out there right now. The, the site is actually created pretty much completely. This whole peninsula is created out of fill. Um, the, the actual the Mill River actually used to run straight across and there used to be a dike back in 1914 or so. Um, and over the years, this was filled in. And then it was also capped at cliff. So that's the reason for doing some restoration out there. Um, so there are two, two trees being removed. There's a large sycamore right here. And then there's also a, uh, I believe that's a walnut um, uh, behind the building here that will need to be removed. Those are being replaced based on the, the tree ordinance um, with trees around the perimeter and then um, within this restoration area there's a, a lot of smaller um gallon gallon plantings sorry can I go to the second tree behind the proposed buildings yes says on the plan tree to remove to remain uh that it's been revised i'm sorry you're looking at a it's a big revision um, why it's too close it can't it's too close to the building the the, the root system would get impacted too heavily. Your um, harborist report says that it could be retained. Uh, I believe that's this one over here, over on this side. I could be wrong. I thought you referred to the one. Yeah, no. Close to the other property. To the yeah, there, there's another one right here that that is to remain. There's a sycamore and then another large maple over in here. Um, one in question is on that of Butters line there behind in the backyard. Of the yeah, this one, this one is proposed to be removed here. <clears throat> and then there's a large sycamore here. That's to be removed. So the plant is sown as a 24 inch ash. Yeah, you've, you've got, you have a, an old mill been revised oh, since then. I know. <laughs> yeah, originally, originally hoped to keep that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was mislabeled and, uh, and originally hoped to keep it. <laughs> so you might want to go over the site changes that have um, been made since the plan sheets were submitted. Um, the latest one, I think, is should be. Uh, well, there's a revision yeah. date up there on the upper right, I think. Uh, it's bottom the left. 925. Bottom right, sorry. 912. 912. We've got the 912 set. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we're. You, you should be looking at something that was dated. Actually, the latest I, um, I submitted electronics. Right. So we have those are electronic ones. Um, so you might just. Um, so anyways, yeah, so so the bottom line is that tree is proposed to be removed um, and it's being replaced at the um, one half one half per inch ratio. 
Um, and that's that's spelled out over on, on this side. Uh, and act, no, actually, that's up in here. It was out there. Um, so we've got 10, 10 spaces as required. There's actually a turnaround area for emergency for an ambulance um, in here, along with uh, it allows for you know, track trucks to be able to turn around. Uh, Maple Avenue is a very narrow street. It's only 16 feet wide. Um, uh, so it doesn't offer any opportunity to, for anybody to turn around anywhere else. Um, so along with that, um, there is uh, currently 25 parks in the parking lot here, but they also have parking along the edge here, which is not an approved curb cut. So the parking for 25 is being consolidated in this area for four parking spaces. Um, head in. Um, two, two, two lined up next to each other. Um, and this, this space here will be uh, loaned and seeded mm -hmm. and removed. Uh, additionally, um, the city's requiring that the sidewalk be replaced across the front of the site. So this will be all new granite curb and concrete sidewalk um, with the standard. I'm sorry, Terry, to interrupt you. Could you go over the parking change behind 25? Right? Uh, so currently there there is gravel parking on the south side or so southwest side of the building right here um, It doesn't really get used they have a sidewalk really the people living in this house really park in the parking lot currently um, it, it, the, it is depressed you know, It's hard to say whether it was intentional or not or whether it just got pounded down over the years But that's going to go away and so that will be brought to the other side of the building. So this building will have all its parking on the northeast side of the building. Well, your, the plan shows a long, skinny space, says two spaces. Yeah, that's been revised to four spaces. Place. That was part of the comments that came from Carol, and you can't keep that. So now it's what? I can't so see. So it's four spaces right in there. So you'll have a total of 14 spaces? Then? Yes. Yep, because of the curb cut requirement and it only allowed one curb cut. And what we were proposing originally with the original submittal would have been two curb cuts, one here and one there. So the 10 spaces to the, to the uh, west of the Yes, yeah, so there, new there are building. 10 in the new parking lot area. Right, and four in the backyard and four in this yes. so okay. while we're on that parking area I'm, I'm probably jumping the gun on you but i'm going to see if we can't look at that sycamore tree that 40 inch great specimen mm -hmm. and see if we can't move those units down towards that parking space and mm -hmm. reallocate the parking spaces to the large lot it, it won't fit in there with the setbacks it's it's squeezed in where as as tightly as it can the setback to house number 25 the building setback because it angles in so so this this building this building configuration can't slide it can't slide to the southwest any more than it already is currently The, that that sycamore unfortunately has quite a large canopy. The only way to save that would be cut this development down by two units, and that that's not acceptable. This is by uh, your arborist. Let you know that yes. because of the, the large canopy, and I'm sorry to get into trees so much. I know you've got a lot more to go into, so we can come back to that later. Can I just can you ex expand the over to the twenty? Expand that, yeah. Thank you. Is that helpful? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I don't need all the little writing, but just helpful that out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, so, what's being proposed is a, is a new sidewalk across the front of the building, extending across uh, the new building. Uh, basically, granite curb ending at the at the property and then transitioning 
to uh, this grant uh, concrete program. Um, and uh, so basically you have uh, shared soups um, on each each unit on well two out of four of them. Um, uh, and uh, adding some minimal lighting here, the safety lighting on the site. Uh, dumpster area right here that is going to be screened just with a stockade fence around it. Uh, so that's... Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, now that I can see it, where's the turnaround? The turnaround is right here, this area, from here. They can turn right in here. So it'll be a no parking sign there? Uh, well, I hadn't put one, but we could. It's not oh, a I mean, problem. It's not striped as parking. Well, I, I guess I like this. I mean, if it, if safe, if this, if there's a safety component there, uh, the, I, I feel like there should be <coughs> some sort of signage that says to allow to allow the safety vehicles to turn around. Sure. Just cash down. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Um, so I'm going to go on to the uh, next page. So this page is basically uh, the, the grading and drainage. So what's being proposed is that there's a subsurface system that's going to pick up the parking lot and the building. Uh, it's both combination infiltration detention system uh, with an overflow coming down into the old riverbed. Uh, part of uh, the requirement is actually to protect the trees along here. Uh, basically, this limit of work is is also tree protection, um, so that people are not going over in these tree areas while, while work proceeding. Uh, and the arborist uh, in the arborist recommendation, actually, this in this area here uh, will will also be fenced off for um, for protect this chestnut tree here. Um, so that will be added. Um, so back to the stormwater, uh, this, the roof is being collected, the, the parking lot is being collected and it's all being treated through a treatment system in the parking lot and then into a subsurface system in this area. Um, this, with the test pits that were out there was determined that this was the only area that really had native material um, that, that was suitable for administration purposes. Um, other than that, um, we've got a new sewer extension coming off of the end of the existing sewer, coming down across the front of the site, water service coming across the site. Um, part of the comments that came in this afternoon was shut, individual shutoffs for each of the units. Um, and then some additional specifications for, for the um, sewer and water lines. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I'll just leave it to you guys to ask. How about snow removal? Okay. Snow that? removal is actually located in this corner and it's called out on the on the site plan, on the layout plan. Uh -huh. right, right here. <coughs> and the dumpster enclosure, what's the, the nature of the enclosure? It's stuck it, stuck it fence. Okay. Uh, can you talk about the exterior lighting? The exterior lighting is just stoop lighting for the stoops, and then there are just two um, 12 foot uh, pole, pole lights in the parking lot. And are those on a timer or? How are those? Are those on 24? Those would be on a timer, in motion motion detector. So motion on, timer off type of thing, or yeah. Okay. Have, have you thought about the possibility at all of um, moving Unit Five alone to the north, which would allow you to? It, it cannot. It cannot because of the special conservancy. Because of what? Well, of the, it would cross over the line. Yes. 
How much is it going to, like, I mean, I don't know if this can even be changed, but it, if, it, if it crosses over the line like a, a foot, is there some sort of mechanism to the line? I mean, if we're, save, if we're saving a tree, it's valuable for crossing over into really spectacular tree. I mean, isn't that isn't that something that you know give a little? <laughs> well, the thing about zoning, yeah. is, um, there's a restriction in um, uh, that no new residential development can be. Um, approved in a special conservancy district okay. <laughs> and so that's uh and you know there um so i think it, it's not clear anyway just one unit or moving it would um address um would would be out, outside the canopy anyway it's not clear that would happen but nevertheless you can't uh, yeah. is it um I mean, I can see on the drawing it looks very close to the little porch area. Is it generally too close to the house? Could the porch be moved around to the other? Uh, in terms of these trees that are being removed? Well, the, we're talking about that, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, well, the sycamore is right in the edge of the building. I mean, it would need to be over here. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it is a beautiful tree and we look at as many ways as possible to try and work around it. Um, but because of the, the SC district, it, it really limits what you can do. I mean, you're really working in this small area. Could you show the planting plan just to see that it's been it's replacement trees where where those are, how, or the best for that them right now? Yeah. So how many ones do you choose? There, there are, are three, um, these are all, should be all two and a half inch trees. Yeah. Um, and then there are smaller plantings to fill in these areas out, out in this area. Okay. Uh, were there any other changes on these drawings versus what we have in front of us? That um, well, the, the, dry, the parking lot was widened by a couple feet. It was a little too tight. Too tight. Was that only 18 feet? We widened it to 20, which is tight, but it's acceptable for for parallel parking. Um, additionally, um, from those plans, uh, the the subsurface system was adjusted slightly. So the subsurface system was a little closer to the property line and moved it 10 feet away. Uh, also moved it a little, little to the southeast um, to get a little more distance from, from this uh, one tree here. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything really significant other than notes and that sort of thing. Were there any uh, DPW comments um, that we yeah. haven't heard yet? Um. So, and just to clarify, this didn't require a stormwater permit um, because it's less than an acre of disturbance, but DPW did review the stormwater permit. So, um, the, um, there were some, um, I think because of changes that happened in the plans, there's still some inconsistency with the plan sheet, so final revised plans. Um, uh, should be submitted. Um, let's see. So the DPW asked for more uh, clarification on the transition from the granite curve treatment of the sidewalk. Um, um, and uh, they made a comment about the proposed dry aisle um, for the parking lot, um, 18 feet wide. Um, <coughs> and saying that the recommended minimum for 90 degree parking is 24 feet. We don't have, um, vehicle conflicts may occur. It's what their comment was on that. Um, I think this is pretty low volume traffic um, to, you know, to the site. We do require an 18 feet um, for backup between parking spaces. So that meets the zoning. I think their comment is just about um, <coughs> their concern about the um, turning. Yeah. 
Um, there were some issues about um, water and sewer line call-outs and, um, and more technical details about inlets and then um, confirmation about um, infiltration um, um, systems uh, during construction. They want to have um, observation there to inspect um, groundwater conditions when they do the infiltration, to make sure the infiltration system works as designed. Um, Did Africa have seen all the things? Yes. And then there are recommendations for conditions, because there's not a separate stormwater permit, that there be conditions about um, maintenance and inspections of the stormwater system once it's installed. Okay. Those, are, those are included standard in the drainage report. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, around the stormwater, I'm, I, I must admit that more and more we see these sub subterranean retention systems that aren't easily, they're not visually, um, Able to be checked, so we have to go by the, the maintenance of them, you know. Right. But I guess the DPW or the industry in general, we, we haven't been doing these parts for as far as I can remember seven or eight years. The industry isn't really concerned about the proliferation of these subterranean. I don't know if there's any, yeah. I mean, it's pretty standard, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. They, they yeah. work reasonably well, as you say, if, if the treatments maintained. If they're maintained, but it's yeah. We know that maintenance doesn't happen on a regular basis once the developer is gone and it turns over to an right. association. And, you know, so. and that, that's why you know the stormwater permit in the city is good because it does force those reports right mm -hmm. every year. But uh -huh. this doesn't have a stormwater permit. This does not. Right. <clears throat> And I'm surprised the DP, so you have an outfall going over that steep bank towards the Mill River. It's an overflow outfall, but the DPW had no concerns about that either, huh? Um, right, and yeah. it's also requires a permit for the Conservation Commission, so they're gonna be looking at that because that's in the jurisdiction. Of the yeah, so tell me more, so all of this building is within the 100 foot buffer zone, correct? Mm -hmm. It's all within the 200 foot mm -hmm. river front. 200 foot river front and the 100 foot buffer? There is no buffer, it's riverfront. Riverfront's a resource area by itself. Okay, so it's all within the 200 feet river I river see. Right. Um, but they're the same standards, the Wetlands Protection Act standards and the DPW standards. Okay. And this hasn't gone to Conservation Commission yet for their- They're, they're in the middle of the hearing process. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's not subject to that. Okay. Right, but it's also this, is, but the stormwater standards are the same for DPW's review and conservation. Uh, there are several comments, uh, staff recommendations. I don't know, Terry, have you seen these? Has they seen them? Um, no, I mean, they were, they're just related to the plan um, changes. So, you might, you know, I'll, I'll go through these. Uh, yeah. Um, when we come back, we'll open up to public uh, comment and then we can review these. I'll keep it open and review Are, this, are these so, ones I haven't seen? Or? I think um, you. When did they go up? Um, no, these are just yeah, these internal are, recommendations, and I, but I oh, okay. I don't want to. I'm not going to close the hearing and then and then bring up a recommendation that you can't respond to. So we'll keep that open. I'll bring it back to you. Uh, any questions by the board? Comments before we open up the public comment? Could you quickly go? Oh, one, one, yeah, one thing you guys might like to see is actually the the elevations. Sure. So. So this, this is the, the layout, uh, the front with stoops here, um, with a slight bump out on the front to give it a little more architectural appeal. Um, basically, uh, each stoop is covered. Backs have sliders and, and patios on each of them. Um, it is a solar ready roof. Um, and uh, architectural shingles uh, with vinyl siding proposed uh, for outside um, this is pretty consistent with what else is on the street also and these are market rate units or yeah. why architecturally just out of curiosity the lack of windows on the, on the second floor bump out um, 
I believe, um, you know what, I'm not, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I believe that's, oh, that's where the stairways are. I'm, right. I'm not sure what's going on in there. Unnecessarily awkward to me. Yeah, we don't have a lot of purview yeah. on there, but and it's all one color too. Yeah. yeah. Recently, we've seen a nice representation of a townhouse situation like this, where the units were broken up by different colors, um, mm -hmm. which kind of made them pop a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, Alan. Well, I'm, I'm happy to see on a new plan, which I don't have two additional parking places because I think they need them. I'm really bothered by approving a plan that involves removing that those two trees. That sycamore tree is a huge, spectacular tree that has enormous ecological and aesthetic benefits. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I don't know, I can be talked out of it, I, but it's, that's, and, and then now that we find out 24 inch ash is also going to have to go, um, reducing the, pro, the proposed plan to four units and making the two smaller units larger, if that would be a benefit to the applicant, would allow them to retain those two trees. Um, uh, yeah, that's a concern to me. Right. So just to clarify, this is site plan review. Um, the ordinance allow has a trigger for when trees are removed from a site that there is replacement requirement. So there's right. no um, requirement that trees need to be protected um, because we have this this process or, or, or ordinance um, requirement that there's replacement for those trees. So, so there's no. I mean, it's pitifully inadequate, of course, to replace right. a tree trees like these with two-inch caliper trees. I mean, in 50 years, maybe, you know, come close, but maybe 100. 7,500. Yeah, right. 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 So but, the, but regardless, we don't have the purview. Um, you, I mean, certainly there are many ways to design a project. You could have a smaller footprint, taller units, um, and, sh you know, shrink the overall footprint. However, you, the board couldn't, um, deny a project because there are trees being removed. Because the city has determined that the way they would address private trees being removed on a project or for a project is through this replacement. Mm -hmm. Dis you know, that, that was the discussion the city had. That's the way that, that's the path the city council approved in terms of addressing the impacts of removing trees. Mm -hmm. The other piece to look at is the footprint of development um, against the entire um, site, which will not be disturbed on that, right. the remaining portion right. of the could, could we, if we thought it appropriate, could we require larger caliper trees? Now, I understand there's an issue of their survivability. They may need more air and fending and watering, but could we, I mean, a two-inch caliper tree to replace what is going to be taken down is just pathetic. Um, you could retire again, require a larger tree to be replanted, but then you do run up against that risk. Right. Well, we could impose that risk on the applicant. Right. So it would just mean that there's longer, um, you know, enforcement and, and maintenance and oversight of that um, tree. The, right. The, <coughs> The other piece, just um, so you know, I think we've been seeing more and more of this, and, and this is anecdotal, so I don't, I don't have statistics on it, but even if trees were to be saved this close to a project, um, using the canopy as a mechanism for um, 
tree protection area. Um, it's not clear that that's a certain path for saving those trees. We've seen some projects five years out where trees that were protected um, actually are dying. Um, so I don't know that we know enough about what really, or, or maybe it's a, it's a matter of construction oversight um, or lack of oversight in those cases where the trees are dying. So again, I don't have a specific, I, I think there hasn't been enough analysis to actually know on this site exactly what it would take to save those trees, how far you'd have to be. Well, it certainly would require reducing, eliminating one unit, which is a big hit for the applicant. Or it could be a smaller footprint and redesigning right. the units. Oh, well, but, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily have to eliminate the total number right. of units. There are many ways. Substantially you reduce right. the focus. It's got to move. Right. 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 Two thousand square feet. Right. You could also do a different design. Instead of a townhouse style, you could do five units in a building, and then that you're reducing the footprint. Yeah. But yes, that would take a sort of reevaluation. And again, this is site plan, so um, your jurisdiction isn't to say you're going to not approve a project because a tree is coming down. It's because we have that other. <clears throat> so, Alan, I agree with you about the, the majesty of this sycamore tree, but I, I think even I struggle with it in having to balance the, the infill and having that right. mixture of yeah, homes closer to town, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible to kind of... Yeah, well, I'd well. be inclined, I mean, we could talk about maybe <clears throat> in this situation require bigger trees to right. be replaced and impose that obligation to keep them alive on the app. I don't know. It's yeah. a thought. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I'm just. I'm sure you guys have thought of this, but could you just put the house on the other side and put the sidewalk on the. The, 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 S, the special conservancy district oh, seems to. Oh, oh, does it go in? Turn okay. around. It takes a left hand turn there. Right. So I understand you said that lopping off units is not a possibility, but can you perhaps speak toward why a smaller footprint, as Carolyn was suggesting, not townhouses, um, you know, configuring the units differently, why you decided not to go that route? This is what the client would like. Um, we've been looking at this project for quite a long time. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's given with what you have for a street coming in, the special conservancy, the parking requirements, this is kind of what was able to fit in here. Uh, Tara, can you just review, you started to architecturally, the, the building envelope, siding, shingles, windows, just uh, the types, the trim, and so forth, What just what the elements are? Uh, well, it's a, uh, you know, vinyl siding, I assume it's going to be um, standard wood trim and a low E glass. I, I don't have that detail for you. Okay. Um, we're proposing, I think we're um, number 25 is that current two family. There's a fence that comes along into that travel area and that's going to be taken down. Yeah. Th to accommodate the set, the required sidewalk that has to come down. And there are the trees along there, they're gonna they don't come into the calculation for um, no. removal. They're small no, enough. Yeah, those um, are all under twelve inches. Yeah. Yeah. I will say though that um, on that note, um, the tree warden um, went out to confirm he believes those are actually city uh, public shade trees uh -huh. so that would come under a different jurisdiction in terms of replacement uh -huh. so um, that would even though they don't meet the significant tree um, size requirement for replacement if because they're public shade trees that triggers replacement. How, how, how far public shade trees determined is there a size or it's anything in the right of way. It's so a, a stick is a public shade tree. Anything in the public right of way. So you got you got a little one inch sucker that's growing yet it's gonna cost you ninety dollars to remove it. That's a question for the um, for um, the just tree. wondering. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions, comments from the board before we open up the public? So do we do we have a planting plan yet? 
that showed us the layout of the trees or the seven or eight planting trees. Yeah, and then there's there's a, a planting schedule over here on the left yeah. that talks about uh, trees and shrubs that are also included in this in this hatched area. Yep. Uh, Terry, any other comments from you before we open up to the public? Um, no, I think that's. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to open this up to the public. If there's anyone uh, that would like to comment on this hearing, please raise your hand. Come on up to the. Um, I'll call on you. Uh, come on up to the podium. Just give us your name and address. Hi, my name is Miriam Bruce, and I am the president of the tr uh, board of trustees at Randolph Place Condominiums. Um, this particular development is going to be, to my understanding. Uh, on the other side of the stream that runs behind our property and, and is adjacent to our property. Um, we, have cons we have two concerns, actually. The first one is environmental. We have testing on our property periodically by Columbia Gas for the coal tar ash, which I guess has been underground for 100 years. And um, as late or early as uh, six months ago, I guess uh, Columbia discovered because of some uh, odor coming from the stream in the back that their map of where that coal tar ash is, is not accurate. So they have been doing additional testing and trying to figure out where it is actually. And being that it is down in the stream area, we are concerned that development of this particular piece of property is now going to affect the, the residue that is sitting under the ground and has been not a problem for us at this point, but could become a problem in the future. So that's the first concern. The second concern that the residents of the building asked me to convey to you is that the backyard, which backs up to that stream, uh, is an area that is loaded with habitat for mostly they were concerned about the birds, the different species of birds that come to rest during different portions of the year. And uh, I actually have a bag full of pictures that one of our residents has been taking over the past year uh, of the numbers of different kinds of species that are in that area. And they are very concerned that this development will affect that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have one over here. Yep. Hello, my name is David Marks. I live at 19 Maple Avenue um, and have since 2016. Um, this, when I got word of this development, there were many concerns that I had. Uh, and I can't speak, um, you know, professionally about any of them, but I want to bring them to you guys. Um, the first is indeed um, what I forget what her name was, um, what she addressed about the contamination underground. Um, I've been notified by my landlord as well as the um, person who owns the house adjacent to us. Um, you can see it on there, um, that there's a lot of contamination under the water there where the Mill River used to run. Um, as, as soon as 20 feet deep, um, so not very deep, and um, stirring that up and also, I, I'm, I'm concerned that none of this has any, um, I mean, we didn't touch on it today, but any notes of the contamination underground there and stirring that all up. Um, so that's the first. The second we've, we have touched upon today, the, um, the 100 plus year old sycamore tree that is at the end of the street. Um, I found it very baffling that it was just, just noted today like, oh yeah, that changed, we're getting rid of that tree as well. Um, that tree that changed suddenly, that, that's in not as glamorous and as uh, much of a spectacle as the sycamore, but that tree, if, I don't know, raise your hand if you've seen that tree in person. 
It's a better note. So, one, two, three. Okay. So, five people have seen it in person. I, I recommend you, if you can't make it down there, um, to just look at it because it is, um, it's quite the thing and it's, it's, it's hard to imagine that we would just say, oh, sorry, the, the plans. Um, I understand the conservation committee and there's other people who are going to be looking at this and, and stuff like that, but um, it's, it's hard to write off this tree uh, because there's not many trees that are 100 plus years old. Um, the third is um, that this street is um, kind of a forgotten street. I've had to call the town many times to say, hey, are you guys, you guys plowing today? Um, some, some city employees um, have even asked me um, if it was a private street or a public street. Um, it is indeed a public street to my understanding. Um, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but up until the 70s or 80s, it was a private street. The people owned both sides. Uh, they owned all three of the houses, um, 1921, 25, um, and they owned the garages across as well. Um, that has since changed, but the street has not changed. So. Um, especially as we get into developing the, the Hempus, which plans to occupy um, not one of the four spots, but four of the four spots there on the end of the street. And um, building develops, developments like this, um, the street absolutely needs um, new sidewalks or even to start to be swept. Um, we, the street does not get, um, doesn't fit the um, town's ratio of cars that per travel um, to get um, swept by street sweepers. So um, that has been a concern that my landlord has said like, yeah, we just don't really get attention from the town there. Um, but um, it's a little gem of a street and it's, there's a lot to it. I think a lot that we're overlooking here um, just by talking about the plan simply. Um, I think that, um, yeah, we should look at those factors and, and have a lot more discussion about um, not only, I, I'm very excited for this development, but um, not only the um, this development, but the street as a whole. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, first time. <coughs> Um, my name is Seth Fisher. I live in the Purple House that's right over there on the corner, on the kind of the closest street, closest house on Con Street to basically where this, in my estimation, kind of unique street comes out, where it's uh, maybe it's a more of a unique dead end street than I've seen because it's virtually all rentals. And so therefore with rentals, you oftentimes have more people than you might have if it was, you know, two people living there in, in a house. Um, and so it comes up the street and it kind of dumps out. Now, if it was just a dead end street, that's one thing, but it's at the set of lights. And that's really the, the, the traffic issues are my biggest concern related to this. I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't support any development, maybe one house or something, because I think that we already have a significant amount of problems here. Um, I lived in that house for 20, almost 25 years. Um, I'm parking on the side of the house and the traffic is so bad, I was backing out, we'd been backing out of our driveway for 15 years, we turned our backyard into a driveway, extended around so we could actually turn around and it's still a pain to get out sometimes. So there are significant problems on a daily basis with just the traffic on that street. Um, we have Netta down the street. As soon as Netta opened up, that entire street was just a parking lot. It still has more traffic than uh, it seems to ever have had before. Now we have, as someone else pointed out, we have the hemp desk opening up there, which is going to increase traffic. People are going to be taking right turns off of cons onto Maple, whether they should or not. You know, people are going to actually be taking left turns onto Maple, whether they should or not. So the amount of traffic that goes on there is it will exacerbate a significantly, um, from my perspective, challenge street where they have to 
to back up the, the, the trash truck. I hear it at uh, 6.30 in the morning or whatever time they're backing up down the street just to get all the way down there. So now they're talking about adding 10, uh, 10 spots. That's great for the people that are now potentially moving in, but what about if they have visitors? We have, um, they made a point of saying that, that basically they have, um, now have they have four spots where they used to have two. Well, that's great. But the thing is, is there's still people living in 25. You can't really, from my perspective, you can't look at this as one big project. You've got what's going on with 25 maybe, because they've got their spots and you look at what's gonna happen with this other spot. The other comment was that some people that are across the street, I think, park in the lot. Well, there's no guarantee that that's gonna always be the case. People will wanna park wherever they can, as close as they can. And I personally believe that this is going to provide this is going to cause some significant problems. I'm not even talking about when we have the hot chocolate run and, and all the other kind of activities that we have in the city. So from my perspective, since I'm pulling out and seeing this potential nightmare on a daily basis, um, that to me is, uh, is a pretty simple perspective on my vote. I don't get one, but still, I get to present my perspective to you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, I'll take the next one in the back. And, and I should note for everybody, uh, just to note this, with the site plan review, we're limited to a certain extent as to what is within our purview to comment on. Um, and, if, and if an applicant meets uh, the requirements, the setbacks, the zoning, and so forth, we, we have very limited say as to what they can or cannot do. If certain, if certain uh, functions or aspects of the project are allowed by right, they're allowed by right, and we can't change that no matter how we feel or no matter how abutting neighbors feel. So just FYI. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, my name is Margaret Tanasco, and I live at 36 Wilson Avenue, which is directly behind the proposed building. Um, and I've lived there since 1981, and of course, <laughs> I've called that little place an oasis because it was a beautiful place. Um, and there is lots of lots of small animal wildlife and lots of frogs in the in the, uh, in the riverbed. <clears throat> I would be happy. So I live right behind that, and the proposed building will be 112 solid feet, three stories high, 20 feet from my property, from where my house is, which will be a wall. Um, and it requires the taking down of the butternut and the sycamore. Which, which is heartbreaking <laughs> if you live there. And you know, maybe not relevant to this. I mean, I understand people have the right to develop their property. I would be happy if it was a smaller scale. If, if it could, uh, uh, two, guys, <clears throat> two guys from um, Columbia Gas called us and made a plan to talk to us today. Because they had been, they, could, they inspect, because of the problems that we talked about with the contamination. And they said that um, just in one of their casual walkthroughs, a, a few weeks ago, what they found was the odor of the tar um, in a place that they hadn't expected to find it. And um, they have to do more testing now. And uh, they wanted to make sure that we understood that this was all going on and that it, the, the property right behind us has not been tested. Um, and they would like to get in there and test it and feel that it's important to do that before we go ahead with a plan that will you know, nobody knows what will happen as a result of the, of the digging or the water flow or anything. Um, so, that's, you know, I, of course they can their property. Uh, you have, oh, the Special Conservancy is the other thing. I, I learned that um, it's, the Special Conservancy came about when David Musanti was thinking about having a, um, a walkway through the Mill River, and it was the whole site plan as a little part. But that never materialized. And then people have said that it wasn't, because nothing has ever been there, the Special Conservancy doesn't apply. Now, I don't, I don't know anything about that, but I don't know if it can be challenged in that way. But if it could be challenged for the sake of relocating some of the units closer to, the, to, the, to that area, um, I know that our, the neighbor um, who, at the end of um, Maple Avenue on the other side of the street, not 25, she thinks that would also be a good plan. She's willing to do that. It's her garage that it would be touching up against. So, so I guess 
the major thing is, is there any room for how neighbors do feel about changes in the neighborhood? If it, uh, in, in just in the interests of, you know, human relations and um, property values and aesthetic changes, but okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, way back. Uh, my name is Graham Bidley. Um, Margaret Masco's son-in-law. I also live at 36 Wilson Avenue. Uh, speaking on, on behalf of my mother as well, who lives at 30 Wilson Avenue, another one of the abutting properties. Um, there's a few things. Other people have said some of the things that I meant to say, so I'll just try to fill in some gaps. Um, add another tree to the mix. There's a horse chestnut that's between the existing structure and the proposed structure. It looks like it's in the new plans. It's, it's crawled several feet towards the property line. Um, I don't think that tree is going to make it. It's a big tree, and if you put a paved driveway, driveway like they have there for the four parking spaces, um, that'll impact the roots and the canopy of that tree is where the building's going to go. Um, so that's something to consider as well. On any given day, there's between three and eight cars in that gravel parking lot, in addition, I guess, to the ones that are parking on the other side of the building. So where are they going to go when the, when the new parking spaces are put up? Um, that's something I'm concerned about. Um, to complement what Seth said about the traffic, if someone's taking a left turn from Cons onto Maple and they can't get through because there's a line of cars, it causes gridlock across that intersection between Cons and Old South Street. So I don't know if we need a traffic study for Maple Ave, but we definitely need one for that intersection and how it's going to impact that. Um, I've been stuck in, in gridlock there uh, before. And um, the last thing is I just want to emphasize what Margaret said about um, about the plume of pollution that's underneath this entire property. It's really between 15 and 18 feet down, sitting on top of the layer of clay. And they've done extensive testing at uh, Kaisa and Igreen's property, which is the, the other buddy's property on, on Maple Lab. Um, they have not been able to get uh, permission to go into this land from the previous or current owners. They would like to do so, because they don't know where this stuff is. All we know is that there are odors coming up. We've been smelling them for years. Um, and so we need to let them in there and dig some, dig some test holes so that they can, they can determine, is there a problem and what can we do about it? Or no, there's no, not a problem, great, we don't need to worry about it. Um, and I think that should be a condition for this whole project moving forward. That should be done before any digging happens. I'm still not sure if this is gonna be on a slab or if there's a basement, but certainly the, um, the stormwater infrastructure is gonna involve some digging and, and uh, we wanna know what's down there before that happens. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, I'm uh, City Councilor Jim Nash, and for I know I have to speak to you guys, but there's people in the room talking about the condition of the street and things like that. They can reach out to me through the city website, and so I hope they heard that. Um, that, you know, I, I just want to say that I've been meeting with, you know, both the property owners and uh, people in the neighborhood. And I just want to say there's a lot of nice people here. And that right now that because we have this project, there's this tension that's come between all of them. Uh, the, the property owners are really nice people. The people who are going to have, you know, who live, you know, a few feet away are also very nice. and. Um, and I'm hoping in the end, no matter what happens, that um, that that will continue. And and I think it will, because they live in Ward Three. Uh, the um, I, I appreciate some of the discussion that uh, has been going on here around flexibility, around possibly moving or rearranging or something to both accommodate the, the trees and maybe also possibly create a greater rear setback um, that I know that there is special conservancy, conservancy here, uh, but we're not talking about an area where the, uh, the, the, the property is pristine, that this area is pretty degraded. And I think any allowance for maybe a parking space or something towards that area. Um, I don't know the rights. Carolyn will correct me probably right now. But uh, but that would be great if that could be allowed. I have two questions and one uh, for the um, developer. And one is, are these rental or to be sold? As condos. And 
to I guess yeah, I address take you. your questions and then we'll okay great and the other is I'm, I am concerned about lighting on the back of the building that you know are we going to get floodlights uh, because the neighbors right now what they see out their back is they see darkness and you can hear the brewery in the distance but it's it's very quiet and so um, anything to keep the, the lighting down would be great so that's it okay thank you super thank you anybody else uh, Terry, a couple things. So we heard contamination come up several times. Have, have there been any test pits done? And is there, there are numerous <laughs> test pits done throughout the site, um, down to 10 feet. Uh, nothing was encountered of any you know, suspect in terms of coal, coal tar or anything like that. My understanding is that stuff is 15 to 20 feet down. Uh, what's proposed here for the stormwater is only down about uh, six feet, seven feet deep. Uh, so it's not gonna be near anything like that. Um, test pits were done specifically in the area where the subsurface system is. Test pits were done all around in that proposed remediation area. Um, and uh, <coughs> so nothing, nothing is done. Are these built, are they slab on grade or are they basements? These are currently slab on grade. And how do you, do you need to excavate for that? Just to clarify that any issues related to contamination with uh, base to air Columbia gas is not um, part of the planning board jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. so. No, I just want to know if it's, if it's an issue, which it is. It sounds like in the neighborhood it's been. Yeah. Um, Tom Drew here has been in touch with talking with Columbia. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, so. We will do everything to comply, uh, to do everything that is correct. And we have your like lawyers in the walls, so okay. everything by the book. Uh, the lighting came up on the on the back of the unit. Yeah, or, uh, uh, exterior uh, lighting in general. Tell me if I'm wrong, Tom, but uh, it's just going to be a standard patio, you know, all sconce. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have purview on this, but for the sake of argument, rentals or are, are these being sold or condos or we you know yet? Yeah. Uh, partly rental. Uh, we are also thinking in the future we might move in one of the mm -hmm. and the other would be rental. It, the intent, I think, is that they could eventually be condos. Mm -hmm. Currently, they tend to be rentals. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So public comment's still open. Let's leave that open while we talk. Um, but any questions for the applicant or amongst ourselves? I mean, it seems like we're restricted by what we're doing, right. what we can do. So, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what, what we would be discussing. I mean, it's a nice street, but, you know, time heals, maybe. A lot of time. Yeah. 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 Well, one thing we could do is what I was musing about was require a much larger tree. Right. So instead of eight, two and a half inch trees, we could have you know five, four inch trees. Right. Whatever. Yeah. That's whatever right. is reasonable. You know, maybe it's a ten year old tree instead of a I mean, I don't know what. But from my landscape architect who was heavily saying, do not do that because the chances of them dying is much, much greater. Well, I, I can imagine that that would be correct, but it would require more care and tending and watering. Well, he was also uh, saying that they'll that take one. and grow much quicker if you plant the smaller ones, as opposed to large trees that tend to stagnate. But that, that's what I was yeah, told. I, I, don't know. I mean, I know a little bit about trees, so I'm certainly not an arborist, but I think if a bigger root ball is properly watered, yeah. the tree will grow. Uh, you also need to keep in mind it is really poor soil out there, too. So. Well, maybe necessary to bring in soil. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm re as, it, as has been referred to, I, this is an unusually magnificent and large tree. 
uh, the sycamore is, and even this 24 ash, the 24 inch ash tree that we thought was staying and now is not. That's a big, beautiful tree, but the sycamore particularly is unusual, and I'd be willing to require some effort to compensate for taking it down. I, I just, just to follow up on that thread in terms of um, the benefits of planting a smaller tree, um, um, the tree warden has um, indicated that the other issue with planting a larger tree is that it's been a longer time in the nursery and the nursery doesn't really take care of the root ball so they can grow in a way that's not healthy for them just sitting there in stock um, as they grow. And so that's another problem you're getting potentially a tree that already is starting to be root bound. Um, the bigger it is and the longer it's staying there growing. And so that's another reason why he certainly has been planting much smaller trees, one inch mm. and, and smaller, because you get it sooner and it hasn't had a chance to develop bad habits, essentially. <laughs> and it seems to me that I'm a, my next door neighbor is uh, not a tree warden, but tree warden's uh, angel, Rob, who plants lots of trees. He's the tree guy. Uh, I mean, it also seems to me that the time that it could take to lose a big, to lose a big tree for that to be unsuccessful, I mean, could could be five or ten years, right? Like, I mean, right. See, it'll, and so then that that's a and the, the smaller trees, the amount that they grow in that amount of time is is pretty astounding. I, I mean, just in the time of the last that I've lived here, looking at the difference that the tree planting efforts have made, pretty astounding. Thing, right? right. Right. Can we approach it another way and increase the number of normal size trees? beyond a 50% caliber loss, caliber loss? I mean, the zoning is what it is. So if we start changing the rules for one applicant, then you don't have a standard for everyone to understand what their replacement requirement is. I will say that the tree warden actually went out and measured these trees and the, it's, it's actually hickory, it's not an ash, but it's also 27 um, inches. I think the hickory he also measured was 48 inches, not 40. So. We we'll just have to make sure, yeah. So we just have to make sure we get the right number in right. terms of replanting. Wow. So one of the comments on, and maybe I should just go through these, uh, Terry. So the comments from staff. One of them, uh, and we can make these conditions if we feel it's applicable. Um, one of them was complete all tree replacement necessary for the 64 inches of significant trees removed for this project in accordance with the zoning. So I don't know if that's that 64 number is in reference It would be 75 to, now okay. with that modification. So I don't know if that 75 inches represents what's shown <coughs> in the drawings right now, or? No, it's just from whatever was given to me from the surveyor. Yeah. So. So it's the three trees add up to the total right. 75, yeah. So if we need 75 inches of tree replacement and we're looking at 50 inches of tree replacement. Do we have, is there room on the drawings to add three, four, six? Yeah, inches? I mean, there's the whole, um, this whole area is all sumac, um, sucker growth, uh, and that could easily be heaped up with better quality stock. Uh, you know, this, most, most of it, the whole perimeter actually, there's a fair amount of significant trees um, along, uh, so um, along this whole edge uh, in here uh, you know I there's tons and tons of that but it's all kind of open okay. all out is there, is there enough room to put them put new trees on the back of the building to give some benefit to the abutters no I think I think the to 20 feet you know for anything that's going to grow of any size no no Can you show the tree protection plan again? Somebody asked about the tree that's between 25 and the proposed Yeah, level. that's what I was talking about before, yeah. this tree right here. Yeah. Uh, the, the tree protection um, on the arborist recommendation mm -hmm. is that it extend um, to the, the very limit of the min what they minimally need, need to excavate for the footings for the building. 
and, and the arborist is, is should be out there to oversee where that where that placement is and that and along with protection regarding this driveway this parking area okay I'm just gonna uh, finish uh, Terry the, these are comments from the staff proposed conditions uh, number one submit revised plans to incorporate any plan changes from the hearing we've gone through that uh, number two uh, shall install tree protection as recommended by the arborist and shall have this inspected by the city uh, three was the, the tree replacement, so for now 75 inches of, uh, of the trees. Uh, $5,000 for uh, in lieu of traffic mitigation. Uh, five, submit lighting as built to show compliance with zoning at no greater than three foot candles and no lure uh, for light temperature than 3,000 K. Uh, and any other conditions that we come up with tonight. So I don't know if you have any issues with, with those. No, that's, that's okay. what we're and so one of those would be a storm prior to a certificate of occupancy, a stormwater maintenance plan um, shall be reviewed and then uh, approved by the city, but, but then go on record in the first 50. Is this going to be a recorded plan? Is it going to be like the stormwater permit recorded? Um, yes, it would have to go on. It can go with the uh, permit decision. So it would get okay. recorded with the decision. Okay. Is there anything that can be done to mitigate the impact on the abutters to the rear? So you there, is a, any there is a fence proposed across the back. Um, yeah, I, I want to go back. Planting plan. so there's a picket there's fence, a I think. There's, there's currently stockade fences, and then and this is filling in a gap. The stockade fence only goes there, halfway. There, yeah, there's a stockade fences on the on the abutting property also. It says proposed six foot stockade fence that goes halfway down the Right. And then building. if you look there's there's also a fence on the on just on the other side of the line too. For the abutting right. property. Currently owned by the abutters. Yes. So it just fills in the gap basically. Yep. Could we continue that fence? Um, with negotiation with the abutters, so it's consistent across the back line. What to connect the abutters fence in front of the abutters fence, perhaps? So well, that's fence. what's proposed is right in front of the abutters. Are you talking about two fences? So, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about extending it. So the abutters. I see Margaret Jerry here, and it stops at the garage more or less, and then beyond the garage is just um, brush and woods. No, there's, there's another fence that goes all the way down to the corner of the property. Right, but there's no abutter you're telling me there? So what I'm saying is, wouldn't it be nice to um, extend that stockade fence uniformly to the end of the units? It, it does, it does. It, that's what I'm saying. On the abutting property, there is a stockade fence there. That's why we did not propose one. So you're going to match that stockade fence? Yeah, it's just a standard stockade fence. I didn't understand that. Okay. Yeah. I want to go back to your last comment about um, when it was suggested that perhaps we plant some small trees. There's 20 feet between the back, yep. the back of the building and the fence. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, currently in the city now, we plant trees along the tree belt, um, you know, close to the sidewalk. And these trees are chosen because they only grow about 20 feet tall, 25 feet tall. And their root systems kind of go down as opposed to over. Yep. So, I think there may be some plantings you could do there that would soften um, within a number of years the look for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you could work with this arborist of yours to find David, David Payne's the landscape architect. Um, so, yeah, we could, we could talk about what would be appropriate. Sure. I think that would, that would help quite a bit. Did David measure the trees too? Uh, the the I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> strike that from the record. No, no, he did not. We, uh, we hired an arborist, Chris Ryan, to do, to do that review. Um, so, are you suggesting um, you might you want to be specific to say a shade tree, um, one per one unit, per unit or, or something? Or one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I that think would help. That's a good suggestion. Right. That. And something just planted right along the fence, you're saying? Pretty no, much, well, you know, off the fence a little bit. Um, yeah. 
but I'm sure he'll have some recommendations. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I just scratch one per unit. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as they fit, I, I, I think those are kind of open to that. I want to go back to one other little um, comment that was when I suggested moving the uh, the whole structure to the southeast towards unit towards uh, house number twenty five on Maple Street. You know, we said that um, there are there we would run into setback problems. We'd have we, to change the whole design to actually. But isn't this one entire parcel of land? So the setback requirement. I think he was referring to the rear, the setback to the. Um, the, the front the, and rear setback is what's limiting it setback. right now. As opposed it to comes the at setback an angle. between the buildings. But if it came directly back towards one of my plans, it says two spaces, and it took over that parking area. I don't think it would, this, the distance between the rear setback and the rear of the buildings would stay the same. Those, spa yeah. you know, those spaces could be relocated. Well, the, the building would have to get narrower when you go, as you slide it to the left. Because and of the It is pushed as far setback. as it can because of the front setback and the rear setback. So the rear setback, if you did that, it would, it would seem to run parallel. The front setback, would it pinch? If you brought it yes, down, because the road, the setback angle. Yeah. So that's what's the, the issue is not the rear uh, setback. It's the, front. No. the other issue is it would probably trigger um, a fire, different fire code for the existing 25. Uh, and that would have to be addressed with fire suppression potentially. Because of the proximity of the new building. Right, to if the you split buildings. it to be a budding. Uh -huh. That building. It, the, the existing building there, you'll notice, is very non-conforming. It, it's in terms of its setback and yeah, I mean it's like six feet or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? So public comments still open. Was there, yeah. I just want to add, rental is a wheat, is a rare bird, and that's a good thing. And so I welcome that idea for new development. Thank you. Public comment is still open, so anybody else that would like to comment on this? Who hasn't? Okay. Can I have a second turn? Sure. Yeah. Um, so. I'm not Rich Perry City, but the man who's planting all the trees all around town told me that red cedar is a great tree. It's, it's uh, evergreen, and it makes a nice hedge. It's narrow, and it satisfies the town's requirements as far as the diameter um, when you're replacing other trees. So we'd be delighted with a red cedar hedge. Um, this is a tall, narrow, long box of buildings being shoehorned as close to our, our house as it can possibly be. It's literally going to boom large uh, above our backyard. So anything we're concerned about noise and light and privacy. Um, so that hedge, you know, I like the idea of shade trees, but they're going to drop their leaves and we're staring at a wall in winter. So the hedge might be better. Um, also, I'd just like to emphasize what everyone else has been saying about can we please reconfigure this so it's not as close as you know possible to our house. If you turn it 180 degrees, we have the parking lot as a buffer. I understand that there's issues, but if you can put a parking lot there, why can't you put a building there? Why can't it be reconfigured um, creatively instead of just trying to put a, a box down in the space? Thanks. Thank you. Over here. Yep. I guess my question is because we didn't talk uh, much about the problems with the Maple Avenue being a small street and adding traffic to that. What's the proper um, setting or proper resources that we should reach out to to talk about the um, the problem with the intersection and that, that street? I might have a sidebar conversation with our council. Yeah, it's it's just behind right you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Okay, let's leave this open as we go through everything. So, uh, I had a couple, um, not many, but a couple um, potential conditions we would uh, talk about in addition to the staff recommendations, none of which 
that the applicant had an issue with. Um, one was the turnaround uh, that Sam brought up uh, with adequate markings uh, on the pavement or signage uh, for no parking. Uh, we've got the DPW comments, uh, the stormwater maintenance plan, and plantings along the, the abutters uh, edge, uh, one per unit, five total, potentially red cedar or hidden, uh, maybe in concert with the, the tree warden um, with the city. If that red cedar could be a hedge instead. Yeah. Of that. I think maybe you could just specify Evergreen and that it, the tree warden wouldn't be involved in this conversation because it's private property. So it's really going to be between the um, landscape architect and the I mean, they want to work with that. So maybe Evergreen, and we would trust that the applicant would work in good faith with the abutters to find something that would. Uh, any other issues that I didn't pick up or that anybody else has? So are we down to just the regular two and a half inch caliper? So we put that sense? Sense? Yeah, but it sounds like it. Can we push it a little? Well, that's that makes sense? I don't know. The number has increased just because. Yes, it should. Um, but what about the size of the. It just seems like the experts seem to say the larger isn't actually better. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I know nothing other than I like the look of the tree. You know, I don't think it can make us happy, you know, that we're taking 48 inch of tree down, so I don't know if it's, whether it's a two inch or a three inch, I think we're all pretty bummed that it's coming down. I think that, for me, the important thing was whatever we put down is make sure it's healthy and it can grow healthy. So, I you know, like the idea of plunking something nice and fat there, but the professionals are saying that's not necessarily the best thing to do, then I think we should go with what the, what the professionals say, because honestly, nothing's going to really feel, uh, <laughs> nothing's really going to feel great now right. that we're losing yeah. it. Well, and even with the smaller trees, you're still playing the odds a little bit. You put in six trees, one of them, two of them might not make it. Or, you know, if you put in, you know, two big trees, we lose 50% of them. That's, right. And we don't, it doesn't happen until five years down the road. Then. Right. We're on other things. Unfortunately, there are a number of other good sized trees on the lot that aren't coming down. I mean, it doesn't speak to the sycamore, but right. there are still, still pretty much a wooded lot towards the river. So somehow the, the wisdom, the tree wisdom is that a two and a half inch caliper is most likely to succeed over the long term. It's probably the maximum size that you want to plant for um, good success. They're real, the, the tree warden is really pushing for the small. And they're still 15, sometimes 15, 20 feet tall. Yeah, yeah, like that. But there's still the very tape measure. <laughs> Twice as long as the head. <laughs> so public comments still open. Move that we close public there. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Right. Okay. Uh, so public discussion uh, comment is is uh, closed. So we're going to talk amongst ourselves. Any other comments from the board? Would you go over the list of? So in addition uh, to so we had staff uh, comments, uh, staff recommendations. Uh, submit revised plans to incorporate any plan changes from the hearing. Install uh, tree protection as recommended by the arborist and have this inspected by the city. Then prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy. The applicant shall complete all tree replacement necessary for the now 75 inches of significant trees removed uh, for this project in accordance with zoning. As offered, pay $5,000 in traffic mitigation. Submit lighting as built to show compliance with the zoning at no greater than three foot candles and no bluer than 3,000 K. And any other conditions tonight, which would include uh, the turnaround that uh, Sam suggested with adequate markings or signage. Uh, the DPW comments that Carolyn read earlier, uh, the stormwater maintenance plan, 
uh, evergreen plantings along the abutters edge. Uh, and that's it. Now, what we're approving, what, what, what if, I mean, the proposal is for the plan showing 12 parking places. Right. Right. Carolyn, you mentioned the, about the trees in the public way. Is that something that we need to be worried about, or the tree was working on that? Does that factor into the tree replacement calculation? No, it's going to be separate. Okay. So what happens is anytime someone proposes to remove trees in a public way, um, that would go through the process by DPW, the tree was the wood facility. Okay. That. Okay. So that, that, yeah. okay. that will be addressed. Yeah. Question about the parking, but the, the four spaces immediately behind number 25, could those just be occupied by people living in 25? I guess they could. So actually, the whole project will, re and in the end, on one parcel will be seven units. With but, 14 parking spaces, right? right. None handicapped access, none marked handicapped. And I guess the most they can fit in there behind 25 is four. Right, they're two tandem spots. So right. two spaces next to each other in the tandem space. So we've got closed public comment. We've got a list of conditions. Looking for a motion. Well, just real quickly, one, one, uh, the special conservancy. I, I don't see that kind of laid out here on the plan. Could you point that to me again? How close that is yeah. to? Yeah. So there's. Yeah. So if you look on the um, right side of your plan, existing um, conditions. Yeah. Well, that one that's on the screen now, the planting plan. It says. Um, there's a that arrow that's coming across the screen uh -huh. that's the boundary uh -huh. um, of urban residential C versus special conservancy and special conservancy is not about open space protection it's about um uh, flood warning. right so even though the high water line has been marked here it's pretty low down those slopes they're still this is still in the floodplain well, it ha you have to do an uh, on-site study to determine where the floodplain is, uh -huh. and I then you'd was. have to right, and then you'd have to go through a rezoning process. Okay. So the fact that the special conservancy is why they're able to put parking spots in that zone because that's just floodplain. Right. So it's not a residential use. You can put parking. I move that we approve uh, this five unit project on Maple Avenue. Maple Avenue. Yeah, I think. I move that we, uh, that we support site plan uh, five new. Uh, a site plan for five new residential units, 25 Maple Ave, Northampton, map ID 32C7172, with the, how many conditions for that? Two, yeah. Yeah, three, four, six. Well, with yeah. the 10 uh, uh, conditions uh, that Mark read. You got a motion? Second. Discussion. Uh, just re remind me again, Carolyn, uh, because of the, the proximity in the 200 foot river that still has to go through the Conscom permit process. In our experience, no conditions that they put on that jeopardizes kind of the approval that we're providing now. The layout, because if the if the layout of the houses gets moved for some reason, or the stormwater gets then, altered, that, that by, would be their risk. They'd have to come back to us. They the have to come back to us. I always wish that the cons cop went first rather than us, because right. we have so much to do with the footprint and the layout. Right, right. And it seems a little bit backwards. Okay. 
So we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Yeah. All right, thank you. You're approved. Thank you. When you speak, you can pass them on. Sure, get a helper. Anna White can do that for you. I got what you're saying now. Right. Wayne, I thought you were going to chime in on the Mill River there. Just listening. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're taking a, a brief administrative uh, break. I actually have to recuse myself for the next hearing. Uh, so George will be taking over um, on my behalf. And Carolyn had to run out for a second. We'll be back in a minute. And we'll take over from there. So just a, a one or two minute break. Is he trying to talk? Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> well, the first five slides, the six slides. They are usually normally off. They're normally, we have mics, but can I, for whatever so reason, you've got a request to speak out or to project like the grade school job assessment. I yeah, so I I have to recuse myself from this one. Oh, I do too. I forgot. A couple of you have said that. So you may be an eligible to Oh, is that what it is? No, no, no. <laughs> 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 you got to remember that you're in the city. Oh, that's you. 
Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the planning board. Um, we're about to open up a uh, site plan amendment by the city of Northampton for a drainage lot layout at Berks Pit Road, Florence Map. IDs 29 to 10, 617, 36 to 410, to map 417. Um, and uh, Mr. Fine, you have a presentation for us, a little overview? Yes, uh, so we by direct planning sustainability. Um, so um, this property is owned by the city of Northampton, and I'm the city's agent for this property. Um, just some of you were involved with us two years ago when we came before the board. Just want to take you back down, down memory lane to 2017. So, what, what you have before you is the first slide of the presentation we gave in 2017. And the background is we came before you for a both a special permit and site plan approval to carve out 121 acres of permanently protected open space, uh, create 10 new building lots on the bottom left corner and allowed two existing building lots in the upper right corner to remain. Um, uh, and, and the bottom left is really what we're talking about today. The, so that the overall permit you gave us is called cluster permit or open space residential development um, and carved out those, those 10 building lots in the bottom. So that, that was approved by you at the time. That's a special permit. We just had a conversation for the last project about what's discretionary and what isn't. The special permit you gave us two years ago was a discretionary permit. You could have approved it, you could have denied it. The board chose to approve the permit based on that and the full reliance on the permit. We subdivided the bottom left and created 10 building lots and we transferred the, and we acquired that land from the developer. And simultaneously, the Conservation Commission, which is sort of a different entity within the city, acquired the 121 acres and became permanently protected open space. In doing so, we exercise the permit, so there's no question of that permit expiring now, you know, we can use that land. Um, and so we protect the land. The other thing is the traffic mitigation at the time. It's, the red line is off a little bit, but the traffic mitigation time you approved is us building a nine-tenths of a mile bike path to knit together three different neighborhoods. That bike path was just, we began about a year ago, and that path was just completed a couple of weeks ago. So we've already completed the, the traffic mitigation part of the process. Um, the, the permit you issued again allowed 10 uh, single family home lots. Under the zoning, single family home lots are all allowed to have accessory apartments by right. So they could have been 10 single family homes, they could have been 10 homes with accessory apartments or, or anything in between that process. Um, this again is what, what you approved at the time. Um, since that time, we've done a few uh, requests for, for proposals. Some failed, some didn't, or for, for developers. Some failed and some didn't. So the summary is the two lots on the left, lots one and two, are privately held. We never took title of that. We basically, the Conservation Commission paid less money for the open space, and in return for paying less money, the developer kept two of those building lots. So they're owned by um, the, the Tofino Associates, the same people we bought the rest of the property from. The other eight lots are all owned by the city. They're all under deposit for three separate buyers. 
Um, we are, uh, three lots are going to Habitat for Humanity for affordable homes. We give them to a for dollar. That, that was always our plan for doing it. One lot is being sold for $120,000, but we're not actually getting the cash. We are getting, we're paying $120,000 and we're buying $120,000 of open space from the same person. So it's, it's effectively a swap because of the procurement standards is not legally a swap, but it, it is a swap in all intents and purposes. And that open space is about 100 yards away from it, so it's in the same area. Um, and then four lots, we did a request for, a request for bids um, with a couple of failed bids, and the final one um, is uh, uh, another private party for that property. Um, and so the, the special permit is not before you. The main conditions of site plan approval remain in effect. There are three uh, changes that we're hoping you're going to consider tonight. One is a relatively small property boundary changes to meet Habitat for Humanity's request. Originally, you had two lots in one area on one driveway and one lot on another driveway. They want all three lots to share the same driveway. It makes it easier for maintenance purposes. Um, and then they have an architect on board, the architect wants some minor changes. So that, that's one change to meet Habitat's request. The second one is um, all the homes where turning the homes a little bit to maximize solar gain. It's the city's goal and Habitat's goal and many developers' goal to have as much, uh, you know, as, as little energy use as possible. Um, and so changing. So those two, I think, are both very minor. Um, and then the more significant one is the drain. Our original hope was we would do drainage on each lot. Each lot would be spots off their own. From a green standpoint, that's really appealing, right? All the water drains into the site, everyone's responsible for their own. But it became a nightmare in terms of sequencing. But, you know, the problem with everyone doing their own drainage is you had to have a sequencing plan for who could go first and who could go second. We originally thought we were able to predict that, and it became hard to predict for who would go first. So instead, the plan is to have basically centralized drainage, more like what you typically see. And this is all possible because the person who's buying the four lots agreed to build that drainage system. So instead of dividing up, so he's going to take care of the part that Habitat is responsible for, as well as what he would be responsible for. So that's the part that, that makes it possible. And then two, two last slides, I'm going to turn over to the engineer to present the details. But just so you know where it came from, when we went to city council, we were very clear to city council that the goal was to include some affordable lots. And in fact, city council pushed back and they wanted more lots to be affordable. Um, so affordability is, is, a, is a key part of this. It was not a condition of your permit two years ago, and obviously it's not a site plan approval condition, but we are proud of the affordability. We'd like to maximize the affordability of any city project that, that we do. Um, and then uh, finally, um, we are not like private developers. If I was a private developer trying to get the biggest return, we probably wouldn't do 10 lots. But we see the lots as, as sort of three important purposes. Providing affordable housing, which is an important city goal. Also providing sort of mid-market housing. So we're trying to push the market to smaller homes. So even if it's a market rate house, a four tenths of an acre ha lot, a five tenths of an acre lot, a six tenths of an acre lot is gonna sell for less than a big lot. And, and that's the so-called missing middle. We think the, the market's not doing a good job for that. Again, that's been clearly articulated in our open space plans, clearly articulated in plans before council, and in fact, it's part of our open space strategy. We have a clear goal when we do open space not to be artificially inflating the value of land. So we're buying a little bit over one half percent of open space in the city every city. So of the entire city, half a percent every single year is going to open space. And we've been doing this for 25 years, so it, it becomes significant. And so as we're taking that land off the market, we have a deliberate goal of creating enough building lots that we're countering are, are making land more expensive. So we, we don't just want, you know, even if we had unlimited money, we wouldn't just want to protect 122 acres. We want to create 10 building lots so that we're not making it more expensive. So that's sort of the background. Um, Mark Darnold was hired by the, the person who's buying four lots from us, not by the city, but we've given permission going forward, and obviously they buy the land and they will be able to design. So I'll turn over to Mark. Um, again, this is uh, going over. This was the previously approved plan, and I'm going to concentrate my presentation on the changes, not necessarily the entire project, because the project has been previously approved. 
Uh, just to highlight the property changes, these two homes here were on um, what's called a zero lot line, and so the proposal was to take one house, slide to the left, the other house slide to the right, and then I could take this house which on the far right and slide it over here too. So in the proposed prepared scenario, we'd have these three houses located together on a single driveway. Um, the other aspect is the drain could be going to a little bit uh, further, but just note that the change in the project, we still have four driveways, we still have the same utilities, we still have 10 lots. Uh, that's, that's the thing that has not changed. The drainage, as you'll see here, uh, there's all these small detention basins, channels, swales, rain gardens, etc. And it does work as a whole project, but again, if everything's built, everything's done, projects work wonderful, but if only half of it were done, it wouldn't be. And it also created somewhat of an issue with uh, managing it and reporting it to DPW. They would have to check and see each one of these things will work properly. So this is the proposed plan. Uh, again, as I explained before, these three houses are the ones for habitat. And since we simply put them together on a single common drive, and since we had expanded lot number 10 to where that house used to be, uh, sort of a simplistic scenario. This also shows the drainage, uh, I'll highlight it later, but we wind up essentially with one very shallow detention basin at this location. And we also wind up with a sort of larger detention basin in this location. These detention basins would be uh, managed by the homeowners association. Uh, each individual lot would not have to worry about its own little scenario. Again, going to the highlights. Um, this is sort of more of a graphical scenario. The blue lines were what was previously approved. What we're proposing to do is essentially erase that small section of line there and create this new lot number seven, which would be here. So lot number five would be this location. Lot number seven would be here and lot number nine would be here. And that's really the only lot change we are proposing other than expanding the side of lot number 10. And this is a highlight of the drainage of making a, a large snapshot to show you the difference. Each one of these uh, blue areas were the proposed small drainage areas, uh, detention small areas, rain gardens, etc. And we're eliminating all those blue lots, blue scenarios. And again, it looks like a very large uh, detention basin. It is sort of large, it's around, uh, I think it's around 7,000 square feet, but it's only about one and a half inches, one and a half, one and a half feet deep in a hundred year storm. And it's very, very gradual coming down. Uh, and essentially it's at grade right now. Essentially the driveway dams up one end of a large swale that traps converses to the site. Um, and it's a very shallow area, allows the water to uh, pond during the storm, slowly leave, leave the area, and it would be remaining a usable area for the neighbors to utilize because most of the time it would just be a lawn area, you know, with the tanks of trees. Same thing on this scenario, uh, a very small, I mean, very shallow, approximately 18 inches in a 100 year storm. It's not deep, very gradual side slopes uh, to, to uh, accommodate that. So it's not like they're going to fall off the edge into one of these scenarios. Um, this is maybe helps a little bit, maybe confusing a little bit. The drawing on top was the previously approved, and the one right below it is the proposed. Um, and again, highlighting that really the only changes happen, I look up here, happen in these lot configurations, and then elimination of all this drainage area to a detention basin here and a detention basin there. So it becomes much simpler. The drainage has been submitted to Mass, I mean, uh, DEP. They reviewed it, it's a complex set of calculations, 200 pages, but we were issued a stormwater permit from DEP this morning. So they have reviewed it and approved the drainage calculations, confirmed that it does work. And why, let me ask, DEP rather than our- I'm sorry, DPW, okay. I'm, I, I misspoke. That's all right. Yeah. We'd still be here. Yeah, <laughs> um, so I think that that's the big crux of the changes that we're proposing um, is Lot configuration, um, drainage. <coughs> we did twist all of the houses, and that sort of slides into my next uh, scenario about trees. We did try to slide all the houses to be solar oriented, um, and the habitat was very specific. They definitely want their houses to be solar oriented, and they are definitely, without question, going to go net zero. 
So that's that's a given for them. The rest of the development, we are talking about doing it, and we want to orient all these houses to be solar oriented, but we haven't fully committed to being net zero on those houses. Um, and this how this uh, slide here, just to highlight the large green trees that you see, those are existing significant trees that we're proposing to maintain. So you know we have to clear area to put the houses, we have to clear areas to put the, uh, the driveways, but we did retain many of the significant trees that we felt we possibly do. We had an arborist go out, review the site. Almost all the trees, the significant trees are of oak. They're in good to fair condition. Um, there were none of them dying, so they were good. Not the greatest trees in the world, but they're all good and conditions. We are removing a significant number of trees out on this site. Uh, we're removing 20 significant trees, retaining what you see there. But that's a fact of development, and we just had to do that. We are fully intending to comply with this, the uh, tree ordinance, um, and we have shown what we propose to put the new trees in there is the lightly colored ones. The colors don't come up too well in here, but uh, well, they come up better in the screen. Um, so we're proposing to add all of these trees, and we calibrated the number of inches that we're proposing to put in there. Uh, in front of the habitat for humanity lots, we have low uh, growth trees that won't encumber their solar capacity. Um, and we fit, fit what we felt was an appropriate number of trees on the site. We would love to restore all the tree that we need to here, but I think just throwing more trees on here would not make it a viable uh, scenario. So we're uh, approximately 82 inches of inches of diameter shot, uh, and that needs to be addressed either through payment or planning an offsite. And so that, that will have to be addressed, but we could just continue to throw it on here, but I think it would not be healthy for the site, have too many trees, it's a wooded site as well. What is the total number that you are replacing or replanting, you know, um, put off We're proposing to uh, install 177 inches. That's what we have shown in the plan here. So we removed 20 trees for a total of 398 inches. Required uh, to replace it at one half. So we're required to re uh, replace 199 inches. And we did replace 177 of those. But my math is wrong here. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking you were saying you were 82 inches. Uh, it's on this portion right here, but I don't see what we have. Uh, but the numbers are tallied up here. So we have, uh, we are um, 82 additional inches that we have to okay, comply with. The next slide um, is something that we wanted to talk about is on the solar orientation perspective. Um, what we have shown is okay, but we the board has the ability to weigh the requirements for um, replacement of restoration of significant trees that we moved. And what we're asking the board tonight, sort of a side issue is We are showing this tree being removed, and we're suggesting that we could request the board grant a waiver for replacing that because we're removing that tree solely for the purpose of supplying solar access to this house. Uh, in addition to that, these other houses that we have highlighted here, we're not 100% committed at this point in time to do net zero, but these other houses, or these other trees that I have highlighted, if these houses decided to go net zero, then it will make sense to remove these additional significant trees for solar purposes. And so we're not sure exactly how the board would like to do that, but we'd like to have the board make it possibly conditional that they agree that the one tree in front of the habitat is net zero and we don't have to restore that. The other trees, if they go net zero, can make conditions come uh, through an administrative process, allow us to remove those trees for solar purposes without requirements for um, restoration. Excuse me, I, I'm confused by your referring to <clears throat> you're not being decided as to whether to go net zero, but I thought you sold 
and you'd say three or four of the lots to a private developer. If so, isn't it their decision what to do? That is correct. We, we've allowed these houses solar oriented, but that doesn't mean they're going to be net zero. So if they decide- It's totally out of your control, isn't it? If someone else owns it. Correct. But if they do go solar, or do go net zero, I'm sorry, they would like to remove this tree and to allow full solar access to the house. Is that part of your application for land that you don't own? Well, maybe it would be helpful to clarify. In the zoning, there and actually, um, there there is a, a provision that allows an applicant to apply for essentially a waiver if you meet certain conditions, um, including affordability and um, and protection of open space and or net zero. So you have to do net zero plus affordable housing or open space protection. Um, so the the action they haven't applied for that permit here i did talk with the um prospective buyer about that option it's actually a special permit request to the planning board so anyone who wants to do take advantage of that not only has to meet the criteria in the zoning but actually has to apply specifically for that so that is probably then going to be just a heads up that if in the event the person has a final design and moves forward with the project they would come to you and say right, okay so this I, tree is going to affect my net zero i would like to have it i'd like to not do the tree replacement calculation because i'm meeting these standards in this happening at this that, point though i'm sorry at this point the city owns the line right okay right so exactly. it's just a possible buyer but Right. Well, and Habitat and has has Habitat an option oh. has an option to buy, but they don't own them. Oh. And they have indicated they want to be net zero. So right. you so will at this likely point, the see. city owns all ten lots. No, they uh, we own um, eight. The first the two the, ten. the two oh, owns right. The first right. 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 So the city still owns eight. Right. We know that Habitat wants to do net zero, but they will actually have to put in a separate application. And I, I just got the language here and it does say it's a special permit, it's not site plan. So you can't necessarily approve that tonight, but you have a heads up that that may be and then by that time the the other non habitat lots um, there might there might be more clarity about whether or not those buildings are going to be <coughs> designed for net zero by the time they would apply obviously but we it's not before make, us tonight. we're presenting the site plan so yeah. make sure you're aware that this may right. happen in the future yeah. so there's no surprise associated with that yeah. and then i think the last slide is this was a, a sketch plan prepared by the uh, arborist who went out and looked at the site and number of trees and made rep specific recommendations about some of the trees uh, as during construction to be observed during construction and in special care uh, to trees and also recommendations even some of the trees that we're not using to make some enhancements to those existing trees um, that's a real quick summary i'll be glad to go into any details regarding again the lot reconfiguration and the drainage is really the two things we're changing and because of the changing with our offering the number of trees that were previously uh, proposed to be removed and the number of trees were proposed to be removed with the result of this operation. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Donald before we open the public hearing? Okay, well, thanks. So at this point in time, we'd like to hear from the public. Um, why don't we start with this gentleman? Yeah, I suppose Your name and uh, name and address for the record when you come up to the podium. Thanks. Uh, my name is Barry Roth. I live on 88 Acre Book Drive in Florence, uh, Massachusetts. I am a, but or a butter of the conservation of the Birch Bog Conservation Area. Uh, I'm here because um, I am. Well, first of all, let me ask you. Is uh, George, 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 are you George Cohen? Yeah, I'm George Cohen. Okay. Uh, you remember I had to track you down in order to get you to return the uh, green card for the court hearing to certify. I remember, yes. Yeah, yeah it yeah. took me quite a bit of time. Um, 
Is uh, Euripides the D. Oliveira here? I'm here, present. Hi. Uh, are you aware of the fact that you were defending a court case that was just held before the uh, John Adams uh, Appeals Court in downtown Boston? What? You're a defendant in, in an, appeal, in, in an no. appeals court. Yeah, I didn't think you were. I'm sorry. This hearing is totally out of order. It should not be taking place right now. Um, is Christy Grenat <clears throat> here? Christy, are you aware that you are a defendant in a court case that just was held on October 8th in downtown Boston at the John Adams Courthouse that they are appearing is uh, a judgment is pending? No. Okay, I want you to be aware of the fact that you are named as a defendant. Is Alan Verson here? Yep. You too are named as a defendant in the court case that was just held on October 8th in downtown Boston. I was a defendant if I was never served. Well, I think we may have had a, a card of yours here. Not me. Well, so I would just say, Christy and Yuri, if I may interrupt very quickly, I've been named in any number of appeals and court cases during my tenure on the planning board. It, it does happen. It, don't worry, the magistrate's not going to come in here with handcuffs tonight. <laughs> don't be so sure. Well, no, I just want to make these folks aware that this is something that happens as a course of If it ended there, about. there would be no problem. We have a problem because it didn't end there. I understand there, there are differences. I think you have a right as members of this planning board hearing to understand why the case went to court and understand what the, what the arguments that are taking place at the court are. The city of Northampton, along with Emerson Way, the built, uh, proposed developer, have argued before the court that in cases of subdivision where improper notification has been given, there is, there is no penalty to be paid. In other words, the net result is that the city does not have to notify anybody about public hearings. In fact, if you look around, a lot of people aren't here tonight because they were never notified about this hearing, even though they have a vital stake in what happens on this subdivision lot. Um, this, they have argued, and the city is a part of this, they have argued that while zoning ordinances require 90 days where there is a failure of notification, that subdivision law does not require 90 days. I think it's a preposterous argument, and I believe that this, the appeals court will, fight, will rule as such. So, let us go one step further. When this original hearing had to do with, it, with this subdivision over here, none of the, the only people who were notified about it were the abutters of Emerson Way, which was a complete error. You're supposed to notify the abutters of where work is to be done under subdivision law. That was not done. I went to Wayne Fiden, Yui Long of Northampton, and asked him why, okay, look, I think that back, I appreciate he works very hard for the city and he, has it, and it's, and he generally has the city best interest at heart. And I appreciate all the hard work he does. I, that was the, how, I, I said that because of my personal interactions with him. He's acted, in my particular case, with a great deal of arrogance. He's dismissed Let's not get into these, you know, okay. the actual things. Let's so, stick to okay, the case. so let's 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 go to the next step. So the question becomes, yeah. how when you are just I went to Carolyn Mish, and I asked her. I said, the case was just heard on October eighth. How is it proper that all these people who have a vest, who are defendants in the case, should be ruling on this hearing? It doesn't make any sense. You know, why not just hold it off? Hold it off for a few weeks. The, no answer. We're moving ahead. So I said, my question is, why doesn't someone check with it? It, 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 it was 15 years ago that Emerson Way sought to move the project. 15 years ago, Emerson Way sought to, to build on other conservation land, which is now Emerson Way, and they got a special permit to be able to build there. The only reason they got that permit was that they agreed to build a number of affordable units. When it came time to actually build them, they decided they wanted to move them to Birch Pit, this, this, this thing over here. The question is, this Birch Bog subdivision. The question is, was, was it proper for them to be allowed by the planning board hearing here these, to grant them that permission to do so? I was not notified. I felt I had a right to be at that hearing to discuss it, as do all the people who abutted the Birch Bog subdivision. Nobody was invited and did not have a chance to speak to it. So what the court will rule on 
is the legitimacy of the very people who want to do much of the building here. How is it possible to go ahead and have this hearing in any meaningful way when, if the court rules, as I believe they will, that the city acted improperly and illegally in the notification, how is it possible for any for this hearing to make a, a vote today? Okay. It makes no so, sense. Mr. Roth, I think you've stated your case very well, and but, I think we understand. And now, so, so, excuse I, me a minute. So we do need to go on because there are other people here who want to finish to this situation here on Birthday Road, and not our previous decision. Let them finish. Well, he could go on for quite a while. I no, think. I don't have that long to go. About okay. maybe, maybe in a few more minutes. So my question is: Has the city bothered to call up? The city says it's an urgent that this that this this hearing couldn't wait. Well, has the city bothered to call up the court and ask them when the ruling will be forthcoming? Has the city called up and asked the, the, the courthouse to expedite the hearing? I doubt it. Um, furthermore, you know, I'm not an expert on the, on the land. I, I know all this stuff over here. There are other people who will argue the case tonight, and they'll do a good job of arguing why. I know I live on that land, and I know that it is bog land. I know that we have oodles of lakes forming. It's not suitable for construction. And the whole issue here is that it is, we've built on every arable land that's available. So now we've got to build high density land on a bog land. Makes no sense at all. I can't go into the details. Other people will. But the whole attitude of Wayne and just telling me, hey, hey, I made the decision. You don't count. And that attitude towards the whole members of the community has just been an absolute outrage. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have a question. So outside of the fact that you don't like the, the no one notified someone, why are you against this project? I think it's way too dense for the property. All right, thank you. So does anyone else would like to speak in favor of our against this proposal. You asked in favor for it? Oh, it doesn't matter, sir. You can come balance up. it out? No, 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 that's OK. <laughs> okay you can pass find it. out soon enough. Hi. Uh, my name is Steve Callahan, and I live at 824 Road. OK, I, I will try not to go through what uh, Barry's already gone But I'm asking that you table this motion and suspend any action on this until there has been a legitimate public hearing and a discussion of the procedures that went through to get this approved. Uh, did you pass out that sheet? Oh yeah. Right. And well, if you see the sheet, you have the sheet. Excuse me, can, can okay. I ask a procedural question? Could, could you explain what it is that has been apparently appealed to some court yes uh, was it the original the, decision the original the original decision was filed the appeal was filed one day late statute of limitations it went to superior court and the superior court said i can't the rule decision granting them a permit to build the right. 10 units right is that right, is right. That what, that's what we're yeah, talking about this is no. not about the 10 units the 10 lots that's in front of the board right now no um what they're describing is a concern <laughs> that um about the decision the board yeah, made on a different I mean, permit at emerson me. way right. an right. amendment to a subdivision at emerson way it doesn't have anything to do with the permit in front of you now it does it does because it's a continuation of the illegal act and the continue moving forward they heard the case in boston on the 8th all of a sudden on the 9th everybody gets a postcard a mail postcard. everybody except me because i haven't been notified once in four times it's been before the thing so uh, after a week i went in and i said hey i'm gonna butter why wasn't I noticed? Notifying. And son of a gun, the postcard didn't show up two days later, but predated back to the uh, sixth. And I asked Mr. Eidenbach, he says, he leaned back and smiled and said, hey, I'm not responsible for the mail, but he might have been responsible for the pre three previous meetings in which there was no notification. I want to know how you can advertise for a reallocation or an allocation of six existing units 
and then act Emerson Way, and then vote on moving six units out of Emerson Way to the Birch Bog when you're not even allowed to discuss Birch Bog unless it's on that agenda. In the open meeting law, you're not allowed to discuss it. Three of you couldn't get together and have a cup of coffee and discuss anything because that's a quorum or whatever. So three people voted, that was a quorum. <coughs> but I want somebody to tell me who wrote the description that appears in the agenda. And I'm assuming it's you, is that correct? To the legal agenda? Yes. It is easy. Okay, so you wrote it and can you read it to me? I'd be glad to read it to you again. Okay. It's the same language that we opened up the hearing with, which is uh, we're opening up a site plan amendment by the city of Northampton for changes to drainage, lot layout at Birch Pit Road, Florence Map ID 2910, 617, 36410 to 417. Right, and I'm saying to you, until you have a legal public meeting in which the public is notified, you cannot continue moving on with this project. I want to ask you this again, just the procedure on this project. Who's in charge of this project? Mr. Feigen? He says he's the agent of the seller. Does he get to rule when I go in and say I was notified? Does he get to, and I said to him, I don't have time to prepare anything tonight because I've got three days. I should have had, you know, 14 days. And then I said, oh, hey, what can I do? I'm not willing to de delay it. And this is being pushed through. And I want to show an example of being pushed through. On the 26th of June, Mr. Batteries sent a letter with a suggestion. He says, wait, have I got a deal for you, okay? I've got units. I'll spend $250,000 if you move those units out of Emerson Way and down the street. That, that's what he said on June 26th. Did, he discussed it with anybody in terms of that an appropriate procedure? Did he get a solicitation to move modern income housing? You people voted on it in less than a month. Did you discuss it? Was it reviewed by the legal department? It was so shameful that somebody risked criminal action, okay, in terms of deliberately, deliberately distorting what's going on. And what I'm saying to you now is you can go ahead and proceed. And the main reason you're going to go ahead and proceed quickly is because you're hoping to get this done and money exchange hands and deeds before the court rules on it. Or maybe before the rest of the public finds out about it. But, I mean, that's about all I have to say is that the director on the seller, agent, should not have the right to review how the property is described should not have the right to review on whether she's going to allow a delay when the delay is only in the benefit of the city finding out about this. Okay. Thank if you have you. any questions for me, but that's what I have for you. And if you continue to have another vote tonight, we'll be smart enough this time appealing, but this time we're going directly to the uh, Attorney General's office because they have a separate office that deals specifically with it. Not until we appeal to you first, unless we can show a pattern of egregious. Thank you. So, so let's go to somebody yeah. else. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Until, yeah. I can wait. Mr. Fine, do you want a chance to rebut? I feel like I'm in a court of law now. Or <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just, if my name is being used in vain, I, I would like a chance. Yeah. Just so it's clear. So the city of Northampton was an applicant before you two years ago. Nothing to do with Emerson Way, nothing to do with anybody else. You issued a permit for us. We are now before you, and we were not an applicant for the Emerson Way special permit. We're now before you to amend our permit. Regardless, if, if you amend this permit tonight, regardless of what happens to the court case, we're changing conditions and sell. We hope we sell it because we have a signed option or time purchase and sale. But if that sale fell through because of litigation or anything else, we're still going to be selling this to somebody else. That's the way City Council approved it. And so we would like these changes regardless of what happens. And so I don't even need to comment on the other project, but this project, this permit's valid regardless of what happens there. Thank you. Uh, I sort of feel like we need to. Yeah. So this is not about the project, this other project. Yeah. And, no. and as such, we do not have the ability to comment about this other project. 
So because of that, if you guys are here to talk about some other project, that has nothing to do with today. Ned, stop. Sit down, please. And I feel that you should respect this volunteer council's time enough to say what is the right time and this, what is going on, has nothing to do with this permit. And what's going on is disrespecting our time because we can't comment about this other project, nor do we know anything about a court case in Boston. This no. is a, if I may address it, because it is important. No, 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 no. Mr. Roth, hold on a sec. Please, please sit down one second. So I'm saying the only thing that is legitimate is they have a question about the process. Was the notification for this permit done in a legal way that works towards this hearing tonight? So that is legitimate. And there. I can speak to that. So it. if you would, that would be great. Can I make one other comment as well, which is that um, at least one of these gentlemen tried to make comment at the beginning of the hearing during open public comment. We said no, it relates really, to this project, so I don't think it's fair for us to now say it doesn't actually relate to this project. And I, I hear what you're saying that a lot of this is outside the purview of a decision right. that we could make today. But procedurally, we already asked them not to right. not to comment earlier. So, right. but they did comment in this period. So. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of the notice, as with any public hearing notice for any project that um, comes before the planning board, um, the notice is spelled out um, clearly in state statute. We have to um, send notice to um, abutters of the um, project and then any abutters to those abutters that are also within 300 feet plus immediate lots across any street from a project so it just surrounds you know like a u-shape around the project and then the lots uh, immediately across we actually do a much broader outreach because it's easier to run the computer model to just say 300 feet around a project so it actually takes a whole circumference and grabs a whole lot more um, and we um, also are required to put this uh, posting in the newspaper <coughs> for two consecutive weeks. So all of that was done. We have the list of people that were notified, and so that's the same for every project. So, so, so but that is not true, what she just said, and I have evidence of it. I have a letter from her posted between her and Al, and Alan Seymour, the attorney today, just two days ago. These, these notices went out over 10, 15 days ago. Uh, this, uh, Alan Seawall said he does not know for sure. He said, uh, sh just two days ago, Carolyn Mish wrote to the attorney and said, have we properly notified these people? Alan Seawall said that we, uh, I, I think so, but they didn't say for sure. Also, the 40A section 11 specifies what needs to be sent out in the way of notification. There's a reason there are fewer people here tonight. Everybody, I knocked on a few doors. Every one of those people came here tonight surprised to learn about what's going on. It doesn't make a clear statement of who the permittee is on the notification. It doesn't make a clear statement of what the purpose of the, of the meeting is. And, and, and it's required by section 48, section 11. It spells out right here. And why Carolyn Mish is talking to Alan Seawall, who had the law wrong, and I had to correct them on it, and I have a copy of the correspondence between us, in which he quoted what he thought the law was, and I said to him, Alan, you're wrong. It doesn't say the subject property. It says specifically okay. the so, line of... Mr. Rob, I, I appreciate it, and I think you're getting down into some details of the process what, that... The notification is invalid, and therefore this hearing cannot go forward. I think it's a process that the planning department has used in the past. I've been part of that process also and been notified of these things. And I think whatever what process has been used is something that's traditionally been effective in the past. There's a state so, law that overrides custom. Okay, it's called 48 still, section 11. We want to move forward with this hearing tonight to gather as much information as we can for the people who have shown up about this hearing of these 10 lots. Right. And if, uh, if, excuse me. And if a legal course is happening on an alternate route, then that will bear out in time. And the planning office and the applicant, the city of Northampton is well aware of that. 
but I really want us to move forward and hear from. Just to address Mr. Taylor, I appreciate your time. I respect the fact that you are citizens doing, serving on your own time. I know, and I really appreciate that, every one of you. And I do hope that you hear what I'm saying. It's cost me about $10,000 so far, an incredible amount of time of my personal time. And the only, the only intent of was that, so that when these hearings are held, people will have a right to be heard. Don't care what the decision is, people have, they're not here tonight because they weren't notified. None of the abutters of the conservation area for whom this is a very serious matter were notified. The only, and- Thank you. Now can we yes. move on to sure. some other folks, okay? I just wanted to say, I, I agree with Sam, and I would hope that no one in the audience would take our time to talk about the litigation that is apparently pending in some court. Uh, all we're here for is this application. And I don't want to take time, it's 10.15, listening to pros or cons of some other litigation. Can you be I can ask just one question. Um, and I'm perhaps the newest person to the board. Is there any deviation from the normal procedure that you use um, for notice for this hearing? No. And, and, and so no, we notify by postcards, we put in the event, and then uh, in, in addition to that, we post a yellow sign on the property, or the applicant's supposed to post a yellow sign on the property so that anybody, in addition to those 300 foot, um, that ring, um, can also find out about it, and there's information about how to contact the city. And I'm guessing you can send things out to the to this ring of people uh, in this circumference, but you don't you can't guarantee who opens their mail and who actually reads it and who actually uh, whether or not the post office delivers it as timely as we would hope. Right. You don't have any control of that, right? Okay. Well, do we My name is Bill Donnelly. Bill, why don't you no. come on up to the podium, Bill? <laughs> we are your comments going to be about the three changes being asked not for these? about litigation about okay. the postcard. So. <laughs> My name is Bill Dunn. I live 32 Woods Road, abutting this plan, and I never received a postcard. It was I, I found out okay. the meeting tonight purely by accident. There was some of you in the neighborhood, Mr. Callahan, said, by the way, I was outside working in the yard. Did you know there was a meeting tonight? I said, I had nothing about it. And I, I never got a postcard. Okay. So I just want to thank you. Let you know. Only 10 people will is know. Is there anyone it. else who wants to speak to the specifics of the changes being, <laughs> being uh, asked here today? Councilor. Thank you. I guess we really do have a problem here. I've been going at this for at least two and a half to three weeks. Am I a happy counselor? No, I'm not. I am hearing so much about the miscommunication, and to me, that is very, very valuable. I want to thank the planning board all the hours that you spend going through plans and everything. But as a city councilor, this is very hard for me. This is not an easy one. I just want to give a quick, quick little story, quick, about Emerson White, Doug Cole and I, and all my abutters who worked tirelessly, tirelessly to make that project be what it is and that was affordable with mix. I was not notified for the first meeting, which I find very heartbreaking because with Doug Cole, he worked with me and all my abutters and beyond. And we would not be here today or looking at even a court case. Anyways, I'm here to say, as a city councilor, I am for affordable housing, 100% and mix. I have some concerns about this plan on looking at the, the driveways. Are these all going to be common type driveways? So they're going to ask us one way into a B and then come out that way, correct? I'm also concerned about the gardens. I have a lot of concerns about that. Garden. And yes. no, three gardens. Yes. Three rain gardens. Yes. And I know the area definitely. I have friends who live around there that are residents, and there's quite a bit of mosquitoes out there. So I 
have some concerns about mosquitoes and health issues here. So I need to know how are we going to protect our residents who are going to be living there, which we hear so much about ticks, mosquitoes, and everything today. So I'd like an answer for that. And I know you're probably going to say that the Department of Public Works will probably handle that situation and the Board of Health. I also have concerns about how much traffic do you think this will bring into that site? That's important for me, which I know that you can put a restriction to the Department of Public Works, correct, about traffic coming in and coming out. We are having serious problems since we have now a new road on Hertz Street Road. Speeding has become a huge issue. And I'm concerned if we are having affordable housing and we have families with children, how do we keep them safe? What I'm asking to, for the planning board, if possible, because of all the development I've done for over 21 years working with the planning board, if we could have them somehow, possibly, just like we did at the Ridge, where we have a covered up like bus stop area and protect the children off the road. Um, um, for the plants with, you know, conserving the conservation land, we have a ribbon cutting coming up for the conservation land. And we are going to have our first um, bus walking trails, which are going to keep my children off of Kurt Street Road which is heavily trafficked. So I want answers to that, but I am hoping, hoping, as a counselor, I don't ever want to go through something like this again. I, I'm not going to blame the planning board for this or nothing, but I think it also is the responsibility of a contractor, a builder, to go to a counselor and say, you know what, I'd like to get together Let's have a meeting with residents. It never happened, and this is what's happening here, and I don't like it. And anyways, hopefully you can take some of my advices of keeping our family safe on Kurtzbeck Road, looking at the drainage part of it, and the water gardens, and saving trees is very important, and I'm hoping that we're not gonna be knocking down a lot of trees. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. I thought it was an interesting word. The, the, the bus, I, I thought, I don't think the bus yet, but did they stop at each one of these places? No, they don't have some kind of common yeah. stop yeah. express. Yeah. Is that going to be added? Or is it, yeah. it just be No, the okay. city usually does. The okay. city, the, the school those department has out where the stops. Okay. And now sometimes, you know, with a larger subdivision, there may be um, a more might look at where a stop goes, but not for a and I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. Please, sir, your name and address? Nathan Browse, 620 Hertz, Finn Road. Thank you. you say Dave? Dave, yeah. Um, I was just wondering how many notices went out for this project to all the butters. Do you know the number of cards that were sent out they we've we've taken into consideration yes or no no we understand the issue um about the process and the notification but and we we all understand that very well amongst the board that there may have been a hitch with that um, okay. we want to move right. forward okay. to just discussing right. a plan okay that's fine i yeah i just wanted a clarification on that um as far as the net zero so you're saying those first three homes are going to be totally sold they're going to be sold, yes. 100% running off sold. I'm sure it'll be electrical. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I have to say. Dave, I'm sorry. What was your address again? 620 Burke Road. 620. 620. Okay. Thanks. I'm here for a Please. Good evening. My name is Dave McCutcheon. I live at 263 Semester Road, Florence. Um, maybe start things off by saying that the trail that was built 
came out great, beautiful. Uh, been down a couple times. The concerns, issues I have with the plan offered tonight, the pond, um, it just seems like it, with kids and stuff like that, might be a little unsafe, perhaps a fence around it. I, I understand it's shallow, um, but when it has water, it doesn't matter if it's shallow or not, it's got water in it. Mosquitoes, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, the overall project type, the parking I've heard, the driving and whatnot. Um, as I understand, 10, ten um, lots are sold. Three to Habitat, two to Tofino, one to an Abutter, kind of as a swap. And four, do we know who the four are for the? For the, the planning board doesn't at this point know. Is it? Um, because you had a notice of subdivision approval, uh, July 26th for uh, Emerson Way LLC. So I figured it would be his because he received a uh, permission to transfer three of his duplex, affordable duplexes to <coughs> this project. So I'm gonna go on with the assumption it's him. I'm sure maybe you can't say or something like that. Um, so, as a numbers game, you've got 10 affordable lots in this project, for the new project that you're seeking for an amendment on. And at this point right now, prior to Emerson moving his affordable over to Burt's Pit, that would make a, a total of 16 uh, units, affordable units available. It just this, these two projects. No, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your use of the term affordable. Um, I'm just using what was on the map. There are three affordable, um, proposed affordable units by Habitat for Humanity on this map on Birch Pit Road. Yeah, and there's there's other, okay, so, um, um, or the ones with the accessible. Um, so in other words, we don't know which ones. It, it doesn't seem to be identified, but I'm saying there's 10 affordable properties at, at uh, Burke's Pit, correct? No. no. Oh, they're not. No. Okay. No, I think right. there's three that are targeted for Habitat Humanity that will be affordable, but the others are market rate from what I understand. I got you. And okay. There's so my mistake. Yeah. Right. So uh, I'll, go to, I'll go to the other end of my, my map. Okay. Maybe I'm incorrect. Okay. If Emerson uh, Way um, is able to do what was he got the permit for and moves his six from Emerson to Burt's Bog. Right? Right. That'll be six less. Are his affordable? I should have asked that yeah. first. Are his affordable in, in uh, Emerson? I don't know. No, low income. income. It was low income. It was low low income. He had a low income. That was a see. different decision that was made. Yeah. You're looking all right, at the right. total number of um, single family house lots on this right. property. Right. right. Yeah. We're not concerned with what's going on in Emerson Way yeah. at this point. Oh no, no I'm only I'm only saying it's because it's it's is it not? Um, if he does move there, um, the two blend. We're here tonight to talk about Bert's Bert's bar. And if he's he got a permit from you folks uh, for amendment approval to move six of his affordable units or duplex units over there, I thought that was part of what we're here tonight for. I'm not trying to get outside the outside the fence like maybe we did a little earlier in discussions, but yeah. I thought it was part of it. I'm not trying to get out. Do were folks here during that discussion of Emerson Way when we Carolyn, do you want to summarize for how that was resolved? Well, well I can read it. Let me let me yeah, in yeah, in some ways it is. Oh, just to no, 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 no. 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 I, I, I'm going to wait, if I may. Yep, My sure. understanding is that the agenda item is about a, a limited proposed change around drainage. Uh, the affordable housing at Emerson Way, something that I was not a part of, I was even on the board, and will be happy to consider. I and How is this relevant to the agenda item? Yeah. So, so, so where, 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 where do I bring it up? So the other piece of it is it doesn't really much matter what or who buys these lots because your permit is about the lots it stays with the land so if the prospective buyer buys it then that may be one scenario if some other buyer if that deal falls through someone else these lots that you're looking at would stay the same no matter 
who the buyer is. Regardless of the price or the house built mm -hmm. upon. Yep. All right, I'll give up on that. I just, what I read was the, the, the planning board approved the request to allocate six of the required eight affordable units from three duplex lots on Burt's Park. I mean, it was just a permit that was there. I read it as it was. I read it for its face. It's going into this project. And if I can't question it or ask a question about it tonight, what other meeting would I attend? It seems like we're getting toward the tail end of, of the permitting here. So I don't think there's a time for me to attend it or address it. I hear what she's saying. She doesn't think it is. I don't know that it is either, but I'm just saying that so it, it, again, I, it's not relevant okay, to the cool, changes fine. being asked here. So I just, I hate I'm to not see sure. by, the, by the wayside. Yeah. What I was going to yeah. say was if six of the lots that, that I read to you right. went to uh, Burt's Pit, then it would be six lots or six living units in Emerson Way that would no longer be affordable. affordable. So, yep. so six lots. Right. So we're right. here so tonight to try is, we're trying to supplement a, low income. Yep. And if we take six from Emerson, yep. poof, they're gone. So part of what we're trying to do with this is to the contrary. And I appreciate the concern. I'm not trying to... I'm One last thing. I was involved with the first offering of Burt's Bog. And it went south in a bad way. And I suffered financially and everything else. And I'm not trying to get on the bandwagon here for wine. But... <laughs> I don't want to see somebody else go through what I did when it failed miserably the first time. And you can ask Carolyn and Wayne what I'm talking about. I won't bring it up. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak to the three changes being offered at this site? Anyone besides someone who hasn't spoken yet? We want everybody to have a chance, please. I'm Maggie McDonough. I don't live in Northampton, but I'm the executive director of Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. And uh, the technical changes that are being proposed by the city tonight uh, on lots five, seven, and nine that we have a purchase and sale agreement for. Uh, we're in support of those changes that they would help us with the solar access um, for those and allow us to create one common driveway for the three houses we're going to be building rather than having to figure it out with the other abutting neighbors. Um, so we, I wanted to just speak briefly to that and that um, we were doing that in conjunction with the pre-development work in conjunction with the neighbors developing the other lots and that that would be a positive thing for the development for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, sorry. Councilor, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on up. Steering <laughs> Come on up. Hi, I'm Ann Zalaki, 788 Bruce Pit Road. My concerns are basically four lots, five, seven, and nine. I live directly across the street from that. So to steal a comment from a gentleman from the previous presentation, the three words he used were noise, lights, and privacy. So these are driveways, which I wasn't sure when I saw the map. So that's great. But I also heard someone talking about a homeowners association, and I hadn't heard that before. So is that part? I don't, I don't, didn't understand that. So if somebody can clarify that, that would be great. I'm all for the trees, especially along the street. We love what we look at now. And if we, and I'm all 100% for solar, but if we can somehow in the planning maintain, that would help with our privacy and somehow marry that with the option for solar. We would really, we'd appreciate it for those of us that live right across the street. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You want to talk to you? Yeah, just address two, two items that came up. One is the Homeowners Association. Uh, the primary reason to have that is because we have a centralized drainage system, which benefits all the people in the uh, in a project that it would have to be owned and maintained and operated by someone. So a Homeowners Association would be created primarily for the operation and maintenance of the uh, drainage system. And one other quick item was brought up uh, concern regarding mosquitoes and the, the bases that we're proposing. 
these basins are designed to totally drain between rainstorms, so they will be totally dry a short period after a rainstorm has ceased to um, add water. So in terms of providing any kind of security around them, you don't think that's uh, necessary? No, again, these are shallow basins, and in, in a hundred year storm, which we haven't seen since 1936, um, we would be about 18 inches deep, and it's a very shallow area. It's not something you're gonna fall into the water. You'd have to wade into it. And it's, again, a very gradual, gradual slope into it. Anyone else? Council, I think. Well, no, I just want to do it very, very quick. Habitat, you did come up and speak about it. Um, I think it's very critical um, that the neighbors work with Habitat and be very careful here how the houses are being made. For the first time in my ward, we've had some problems with having um, prefab home brought in and it's a significant difference than what I have on West Stanton Road with Habitat. So I'm hoping that Habitat will look at that very carefully. And I also want to say from my heart that I got many, many calls with the first hearing that a comment was made, well, affordable, that they won't mind moving into an area. I mind because I think no matter where we have a mix, it is very, very important where they live and that they are part of the community. And when I heard that that comment was made here in planning, I wish I was here because that was very heartbreaking. Thank you. Please. I'm Rich Manowitz. I'm the uh, majority or managing member of Emerson Way. I'm going to try to be brief because I know it's very late. Um, I've been in the city for 30 years doing business. We've done quality projects. Emerson Way is a quality, arguably the nicest uh, residential community in North Hampton. We've done a nice job in Florence Marketplace. We've been big, uh, major contributors to the Business Improvement District, the Downtown Northampton Association. My group, along with Smith College, are the two largest uh, donators to Downtown Northampton. We've done that for the last decade. Um, in terms of this specific uh, approval that we're seeking, we've redesigned the drainage to avoid the, the sequencing that was impractical. We formed a homeowners association because there's driveway maintenance and there'll be drainage uh, maintenance. So, it makes sense from an administrative point of view to have sort of a, a lightweight homeowners association. Excuse me for one minute. When you say we, are you speaking for the city of Northampton, the applicant, or? I'm presuming that we're going to buy the property from Emerson Way. The four units? The four lots. Okay. And uh, we, we will not close on those lots till the litigation with Mr. Roth is settled one way or the other. Um, we're very pleased to be working with. Uh, this is the Thank you. We're very pleased to be working with Megan and Habitat. We've gone through a lot of gyrations. In effect, it's a joint venture of sorts. We're subsidizing site plan costs for Habitat to make it more affordable. Um, we're a private developer. I think this is the first affordable home homes built without any public assistance. We're also proud of that. And we did try to have a, ma uh, a meeting with the neighbors last Thursday. We sent out an email to the neighbors, to Marianne, and no one showed up. And we asked them to invite anybody they wanted. They could have any agenda, agenda items that we want. So we tried to be as transparent and um, as open and, and willing to talk as uh, we possibly can. And if we are successful and we do get approvals, we'll maintain that attitude. Thank you for your time. And I'll try to review this as well. I want to address specifically the plan. Okay. Uh, if you draw a circle, oh, can we get the, uh, the plan up there? Yeah. Anyone? Where you can see the house. Okay. Yeah. 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 
No, I want the one that shows the current. Okay. So my concern again is density. I think that was a concern that was originally expressed. If you draw a circle, if you draw a circle, the original plan, right? We want to. No, I want the current one. Yeah. If you draw a circle around the five homes in the middle, the three that border the uh, mosquito pond and the two above it, it's about 33,000 feet. And that's what the zoning is on the other side of the street. It's 80,000. So you could fit two, and I would say, wow, well, they're 10 units, you know? But you know what it is now? Everything you have to watch very carefully with anything Wayne might do, particularly in small letters. Okay? <laughs> but you notice that now it says single family with an accessory apartment. You know what that's called? A duplex. Okay? Duplex. So we've gone from some place that was intentionally <coughs> and overloaded, and let's say, why don't we add three or four more apartments? I'm sorry to interrupt, but Carolyn, is it, is it my, I think I learned at the last meeting that um, every house in Northampton has an accessory apartment by right. That's right. You mm -hmm. could do an accessory apartment by right in every single family house. Oh, but so this yeah. isn't unique. This is so right. By it's right. only, and then, and then I'm these lots up. were created as part of, again, sort of at the beginning of, of part of a cluster. So you're clustering the units in one area to protect. Okay. And the other thing is the drainage plan is based upon these homes. These are the market value homes and the rest of a footprint of 625 feet. Now that's smaller than houses for the habitat. And you know why? Because if you put a bigger footprint on there, more land gets covered up, more rain gets directed. So all of these houses are smaller than the one bedroom. Well, I wonder how that happened. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very quick, with respect to your time. Just, um, I had spoken with Carolyn, and she had talked about the uh, size of the lots, and she said that the size of these lots, proposed lots for this area on first lot subdivision were comparable to the community, but that is entirely incorrect. Uh, if, if you actually look at the map of the surrounding community, immediate around it, the areas are, the acreage is double to three times what is being allotted for these, these divisions. Uh, the land can't handle it. That's my objection. It's conservation land. It was acquired because it's sensitive land, and and it's just disastrous for the living things that are there. Uh, thank you all for your time, and I appreciate. Sorry if I took up too much of your time, but trust me, it's nothing like what I went through for the last year. Just trying to get people heard, Thanks. and there are more people here today because they weren't heard. I would ask you to, to delay until the other people are notified, and you can have their inputs because they have a lot to say. Thank you. Anyone else before we return to the board for questions and discussion? All right. Well, um, again, as Carolyn reminded me, this was originally a cluster zoning, and the reason we did that is to protect all of that open space that's part of this big parcel and to allow these, you know, it's one of the goals of uh, the city of Northampton just to address some of those concerns. Um, any questions about the three? Items that we're looking at here, the mosquito, not the no right, just the oh. repositioning of the homes, oh. the changing of the lots five, seven, and nine. No, no, no. pretty straightforward. Yep. Okay. Yep. Looks like we're looking. Yep. Some of the issues raised by the um, the public, the mosquitoes. I think they you know, can't wait. Yeah, it sounds like the, the water drains yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and it's wet. And, yeah, you know, it's a boggy area, and if some of the land is opened up. Perhaps there'll be more. They'd get rid of the mosquitoes in my house. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it's ignore. pretty straightforward yeah. if we ignore everything having to do with the uh, Emerson Way development and the litigation. Mm -hmm. This yep. is pretty straightforward. I'm prepared to vote. So do I. I move to close public comment. Um, I just want to read, I mean, you don't have to have public comment, the staff comment about DPW comments. Oh, just yeah, let's keep the public comment for just a little bit. So, so we make sure we can ask some questions of the applicant and his engineer. So please, Carolyn. Um, okay, so um, there's a, um, there's some, 
this has a separate stormwater permit that was um, issued. So um, they there are notes on here about um, grading and phasing um, relative to the um, rain gardens. It was just cleaning up the notes. I think overall, um, um, DPW wants to see revised plans um, incorporating any changes that are made and cleaning up the um, labels on the plans prior to um, permitting. Um, and um, they want to show um, stabilization of um, construction entrances indicate that the post, post driveway locations um, that they remain in effect until the driveway is completed. Um, and um, And then some water and utility lines. I'm sorry, I thought there was another um, item in here about the um, site, but that's that's basically it. They want revised plans and um, uh, that show um, tweaks to the labeling on the plan sheets and then um, uh, construction um, driveway tracking um, for the construction to be remaining in place till the end of the driveway. And like the previous permit, because of these three retention ponds, rain gardens, is there a maintenance plan for them that's filed with the DPW? Yeah, so because there's a separate stormwater permit, that that path is already, that's required as part of that um, permit to to um, maintain compliance with that permit. So there's a whole separate requirement in those conditions. <coughs> Um, the applicant spoke a little bit about the uh, specimen trees and the net zero and if they took down a tree to be net zero they would get a waiver so it's not to have to replace those trees or pay into the mitigation I think we're not addressing that or at least my assumptions we're not addressing that if those homeowners come back it would be right. through a yeah. special permit right. okay. um, Okay, yeah, you know, certainly every development like this and the change wasn't drastic changes to the driveway, but traffic was addressed at the original permitting of this situation, even though that did come up tonight. We're always concerned about traffic, but I think it's been addressed already um, during the original permit. And as we heard about the bus shelter, you know, that's something that doesn't happen at a, a subdivision this size. And even, I don't even know whether the within the range of the schools certainly some of them are some not so bus shelter again is kind of out of our, our hand okie doke any other questions by anyone before we have our motion and there so i had some recommended conditions in my staff report about mostly about the tree protection process and having inspections prior to um that uh prior to um, starting construction and then the um, um, conditions that would uh, basically um, have the applicant comply with the arborist report about um, pruning and um, and treating some of the trees on site to to maintain their health not just during construction but for the long term um, and then um, uh, relative to the prior uh, certificate of occupancy that the tree replacements um, be completed in compliance with the zoning and um, that as built for the driveway locations and stormwater infrastructure be submitted um, also there need to re um, report the easements and maintenance agreements relative to the driveways in addition to the um, stormwater So we'll make a motion in accepting the conditions of both the DPW and the, the staff report. And just I, one other comment. I know there were a couple of people, just so you know, a couple of people who mentioned that they weren't notified. Um, a couple, two of them in particular, I noticed, were um, well outside the 500-foot ring, even up to 1,000 feet from the project. So. 
we would not be notifying people who are beyond 300 feet. So both those people were beyond the 300 feet. Make a motion. Uh, well, first to, let's say, close the public hearing. Uh, okay. Any discussion on the motion to close public hearing? All right, all those in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Uh, make another motion. Move that we approve the site plan amendment for drainage and lot layout for map ID 29-10. 617 and 36-410 for 17 with the uh, including the uh, recommendations of staff in that have been recited. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all right, all in favor? Yeah. That's it. Any opposed? Thank you very much. No, I'm not. I really appreciate all the work you put into it. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's so complicated then. Oh, right. Move out of the room. Please bring your conversation to outside. We need to start another hearing. <laughs> Comment about something sure. not on the agenda. Sure. I just want to state my gratitude to Carolyn and Dwayne for being so. Hang in there. Hang in there. That's all. Yes. That's true. My comment too is that unfortunately the board does serve some time. That's just part of our role. But that point is that I think more than anything else, so you can't never know then give a little push back. Yeah. 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 We can yes. make this as brief as you need. Yes, no, no, let's do it. Yes. Wait, do you need to read it for you? Does anybody over there have a cert, can't get in for something? I have an issue with the last yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. I have a Robert Troll's order. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's our only issue. Oh, my God. Bobby! Bobby! I'm sorry, I don't think you have command and control from the pit. Robert. I'm getting in here. Hi. If I remember correctly, it was the applicant who suggested we hold this tonight. Yeah. Even though we knew it was going to be this oh, late hour. Yeah. You, said, you said I was I remember that. You said we were trying to do it. You're trying. Oh, yeah. That was our hope, too. We trust you. That's okay. I hope you saw that. I feel like my first meeting all says, it's not like this all the time. Yeah. But, uh, I have a 13 side show. 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 I have a 13 side
me. Not me. Not me. Who is this? Wait a minute. I no, no. Yeah, it's like a That's not the Of course they're going to I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, which eliminated the traffic signal. I didn't hear any other, any additional issues about landscaping, so I didn't ask anybody from Berkshire Design to be here. Uh, I felt we were in pretty good shape. Uh, we were in pretty good shape with the utilities, except for a question you or Dave had asked about uh, the gas company and their moratorium. They had committed to us yeah. that we were grandfathered. Uh, and I, I don't know that we have... Seven propane tanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Very big propane tanks. Um, the, I don't know that there were any remaining issues with the layout, the sidewalks, the landscaping, uh, the bike paths, right. uh, the, the bike... Uh, and just so you know, the, the proposed conditions that I sent to you and the staff memo also went to the applicant, so they're aware of all of the, that mm -hmm. list. And it just incorporates the um, agreements that were made about the traffic that we've been working on for. And they were going to spec out on, on the revised plans another bike parking area, I think. We were uh, side can one. We go to, uh, there was one that, three. that wasn't labeled. Uh, okay. That's this oh, one yeah. in the corner yeah, here. We so we added the label. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what was missing. It was, right. it was not clear. And we, I think those were all of our issues except your issue about glazing. Yeah. And that's just a clarification, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I I guess if you. Right, the zoning says that, you know, they have to be transparent windows, so. Um, Can we go to the? Uh, there was it there on the red Yeah, the yellow architectural elements. You say they have to be so, so deep, point. too, so you could display things in them? Well, or? they're meant to be display windows, um, not just advertising windows. Not just hanging signs. Yeah, like, not the yeah. July approach. Like display windows, like. Like Macy's yes. Christmas time, <laughs> sure. or, or, yeah. or a big coffee right. cup Another. You know, that makes you want to come in and drink a giant slurpee or something. I do, right now. Right. <laughs> Here's right. A big fat our issue. Front. The storefront entry door, and we're talking specifically about the building at the front of the site. I'm very old school. I'm looking for a, a board. All right, well, I got one if you like one. Uh, I would. All right. Um, so the, the front door is actually oriented toward the interior of the property and facing the building in back. The building in back is facing King Street. So this is this is the King Street elevation here, and this is the, the building that's actually okay. focusing, if you will, into the um, parking lot, which is where your retailers and your storefronts will be. Um, and this shows it as well. Uh, from the other angle, you can see Greenfield Savings here, but then this is what we have as the facade that's facing King Street, King Street right now, uh, which is, of, as you know, is linked by the drive-through. Um, there are doors and windows, those are true windows, um, you know, with, with depth to them. Uh, however, because this is the, what we would call the backup house area for the retailers that will be going in here, typically that's where they have their stock rooms and their toilet rooms uh, and things of that nature. So what we were proposing is that they windows uh, along this facade be spandrel glass so that um, you do not see what do you need the uh, no i'm just going to stand behind my block right here so you would not see the um uh, the stock that's being stocked by those retailers in that, in that and in, in the back room you're looking at uh deliveries that he hasn't put in the shelf yet the mop sink and mop the cleaning supplies the employees changing area that's at the back of the house. It's got to be someplace. And you're not going to put it up in front with the cash registers or the, the main entry door or whatever else you have. So what we were proposing to do was use a product called spandle glass, which isn't going to crack in the heat uh, and is opaque, so you can't see through it, uh, but actually does manage to let some light through into the, into the space uh, because they are real windows. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll also add too. I think the um, the requirements of the uh, the code is a sixty percent of, uh, of windows uh, along the facade. If it's within twelve feet of the buffer, and we're much further back from the buffer, we have a uh, seventy five percent openings of windows in that facade. So we've certainly done a little bit better with the uh, the windows and the fenestration, but um, based on how the building is going to be used, you know, we do have uh, or we are asking for spandrel glass. 
it, it is a retail building. That is our intent, with the exception of the first tenant, which is Starbucks, and their back room is back there. Um, and that's that's not something you want to look at as you drive by on King Street. Uh, we would prefer that those back windows facing King Street be spandrel glass, and we think the uh, the board has the ability to do that. Um, you you have the ability to tell us uh, how much, uh, what portion, or, or allow us to shade or uh, film or use opaque glass for all of those windows if you so choose. Are those the windows you're speaking of? Yeah. Yeah. To me, the, so the intent of the zoning is to make King Street as walkable and pleasurable for pedestrians as possible. So ideally, the Starbucks front door would be on King Street and the drive-through would have been around the back, right? So that we would see that. So now what we're gonna see the pedestrians and even people driving by are gonna see more cars and they're gonna see blank glass. Well, you are gonna see the drive-through. We'll have landscaping in front of that, which partially obscures the cars that do line up in the drive-through. Yeah. But that is the back wall of the building, In you know, although uh, the architect has dressed it up with windows and doors and awnings and made it look like storefronts and made it look appealing. It still is where the gas meters are and the electric meters are and the menu board for Starbucks is. Uh, they have to be someplace on that building. So you're proposing the bottom Drawing, or it's the same no, one. Just the same one. This is, same the, one. This is the this is the facade facing the parking lot. So these this are the, the main. Those are the storefront entries. Okay. Yeah. So it's the one. The corner. The corner. That one. It's this here. That's correct. No, no, no. So it does okay. It, so the idea was to have the window, transparent windows along King Street as if you're not necessarily in the space. Of course, their front is oriented to the parking lot. So those are all going to be whatever windows they want. Like, the, I, the question is, are you okay with opaque or semi-opaque? Or can there be just some of those, some portion of those be real display windows that then are backed by something where you could hide the whole, you know, broom closet or a utility room? Um, well, so yeah, it's, it's everything you would normally put in the back room of a store. And it's, I hadn't thought of this, but Frank pointed it out yesterday. There's electrical gear back there, there's plumbing back there, there's all this stuff in that. Right, but what we're suggesting is, of course, you do that, but you have a you have a, a little closet, more or less, at the window, that gives you 12 inches, 14 inches, whatever, to provide some kind of display there, so that livens up that space for people no, if, just not looking. If I may, just add that, and I and I completely understand what the regulation you know is is there and what it's why it's there. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought when, when reading the regulation is that because when you're walking down a sidewalk, you do want to see the display windows. Mm -hmm. It's a little unique in this case because the sidewalk is out here, then we have a landscape buffer, then we have a drive-through lane, and then we have the building itself. So it's really not the same effect as if you're walking in downtown, walking past windows and then have spandrel glass there. You're quite a good distance away from the building. Yeah, so I think it's a pretty elegant way of handling to keep the visual, visual, visual appeal consistent with what we're trying to do in, in King Street while accommodating the fact that it's oriented the way that it is. I mean, I, because the other thing too is it's, you know, display windows that are in between that tree buffer and the drive-through lane strikes me as, I, the other thing too is they, they seem like they might be, if we ask them to set something like that up, they might be subject to some benign neglect and, and, and not be maintained, I mean, you know, not everybody's going to be faces, right? I think the biggest issue is that you just, you just need to know and make that right. decision specifically so that you, you understand that's, right. that's yeah, what I, they're doing. I was thinking the same thing, but this gentleman said that there's the buffer zone and trees and the driveway and the cars, if they're parked there, he's that's always true. going to be looking at these windows. So we don't actually want to encourage pedestrians in that specific spot in between, right? Anyway, right? Like that's not. Is it drive? Right. 
Yeah, there's not a there's not an adequate sidewalk to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, the driveway well, is here, right? Well, this is the drive through Yeah, I don't want to. Toilet paper, paper towel. <laughs> and you're right. If we make them do it, they may just stick a something in there that gets dusty yeah, and it's gonna, fades it's out. It's going to be pumpkin latte all yeah. year long. Yeah, all year long. It's going to be yeah. paper crackers yeah. so over pumpkin latte in July that we won't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah, let, yeah. let me just right, say so, something. I mean, we, we, we've seen things like that where there's display windows and what it becomes is it becomes a management headache mm -hmm. to try to get you know because we get complaints from the tenant <coughs> and we go to the tenant say listen you, can you do, I mean it's 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 really it's hard um, and this is a this is a way to make the whole thing neat always looks nice um, you can you can tell by our project at 325 where base it is the landscape in there is beautiful we always maintain it uh, and that's what this will become so yeah, I, I don't have a problem well I, I there's not always cars in front of the building right there's not always a car in the drive through even though Starbucks is a very popular there's place be trees though. well but there's gonna be trees but trees grow up you're gonna see right through those trees you're going to see gas meters. You're going to, you're going to be looking at the back of a building. Mm -hmm. Just so we're all aware of that. Ten years from now, that's what you're going to be looking at. Well, as opposed to that. Yeah. 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 But that, that, yeah. Yes. Maybe that's the big issue. Is either we're not okay with the building. Well, we but, but and so if we are, then let's just embrace that and have it look really as good as we're going to get to the line. I think if you force them to make it a display closet, it's going to he's going to be chasing them. well you know the irony is people are going to be there waiting for their latte and they'll have a long time to look at like the mouse droppings and the <laughs> <laughs> not saying there would be i'm trying I haven't to seen that you know. <laughs> all right, all right let's move forward. so before we do anything else this is a public hearing it's a continuation is there we must open it up to the public yeah. is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor or against this proposal they're all in favor, I think. Yeah. I feel like all this right. is a favorable right. crowd. <laughs> yeah. okay. I moved to close public hearing. No, I already did. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I did it first. I was thinking about it. <laughs> okay, any discussion on closing the public hearing? All right. All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous again, Carol. All right. So, um, any more discussions before we... Comments, observations, before we hear a motion? Did we? Uh, we think there's a lot of this. Yeah. So, do you want me to read them? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. the list. Take a reference. You've read them? Mm -hmm. okay. The applicants read them. You've read them. Yes. I move to. Uh, that we approve the continuous uh, major site plan for 34,000 plus square feet of new mixed commercial building with drive through and related site development. Special permit for more than one curb cut, 301 to 303 King Street, Northampton, map ID 24B, 7D, 7B1, and 81 with the uh, listed conditions. Second. Second. What about the windows? Mouse droppings or? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, as presented with the opaque. The motion. What is it called? Spandrel, Spandrel glass. Spandrel glass. <laughs> the motion is uh, both for a special a major site plan and a special permit. But we're all doing it in one. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion about this? All right. All those in favor? Yeah. Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, I, I moved to approve all of the all of the, the minutes we all read. Yep. Just hold on. Let's see what Carolyn has for us. It's not going to be but another four minutes. I have an A and R. It was ready to go, but I never got to go upstairs after the zoning board except to get water. So it's on Milton Street, across from the high school, Riverside, Alpha Riverside Drive. 
it's a 15 foot wide lot being carved off of an existing single family house lot. I can show you on the screen if you want. No, it's on Dolby? No. And we can't say no either. Yeah, right? Say it on. Great, approved. So, motion to approve the ANR. Second. Okay. 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 And then the only other thing um, I have are the three minutes. If you had a chance, we should just, or we could pop them to the next meeting. Fully read them. They were great. You know, I like the type of kind of a, the minutes. Yeah, I think a different font would be. I would like them to be 60% of the papers. <laughs> Only crazy salary, right? <laughs> I thought they were all of them. Extra time, right? Over time. Oh, I'm not supposed to do over time. Here. <laughs> I'm a week of all minutes. Second. Third? No. All in favor? Yes. There you go. You to do that? <laughs> See, they're good. <laughs> I guess so. And then um, that's it. I don't have anything else. I, I would pay over time today. No? I, I, I would agree? close the post. Do you close want to the meeting? Second. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everybody for hanging in there.